Hello, everybody, and welcome. Why am I blurred? Ah, uh, say that you're saying no, it's just eCam. It's not my brilliant camera. <laughs> my camera didn't used to do this, so it must be eCam in your face. Uh, in yeah. your face. Yeah, okay, okay. I need to I need to replace this. I need to fix this. Uh th everything went wrong after we we were in Israel and uh the camera fell down after it was put in a strange place. And you're like, no, it still works, and yet <laughs> it yeah. never focuses correctly anymore. Yeah, yeah. I, it's, it's just, I'm pretty sure it's just the lens. So if I change the lens, it probably won't happen anymore. Um well, it, that's the thing, it doesn't seem like the lens, it seems like a problem with the autofocus. Could be too going in and out of focus. Seems like you got a problem. I told you try 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 taking off the autofocus and leaving it focused on one spot and see if that works. Yeah, yeah. I don't like getting uh, major equipment, new equipment. I have had this camera for a long time now, so that's that. Anyway, um, welcome everybody, welcome everybody, and welcome everybody uh, to AP Apostate Prophet Live Channel. Thanks for joining us on this great assembly. We have come together here today to talk about fantastic things. Fantastic things such as death. Fantastic things such as Islamists. Fantastic things such as golden showers. Um, first off, before we, before we continue, I, had a, I made a poll earlier today before we went live. It was indeed a very important poll. I started it. I wanted to conclude and uh, announce the results of the poll once we go live. I see now uh, over 700 people voted so far. Uh, the question was, what do you choose? And the choices were life, death, or the cow. And I see now that 46% uh, said life, 2% said death, and 52% said the cow. So... It is quite obvious what people prefer here. People choose the cow. Yeah, but but to be fair, to be fair, that could be skewed because yesterday we did an entire live stream on a cow. So that could have shifted it, right? In other words, if you catch people a week from now and they forget about the cow, then they might they might vote differently. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's pretty accurate. I think it's pretty accurate. So um, today we want to react and to review, react to and review a video that was posted by uh, my dear friend, Mohammed Hijab, who is a very good friend of mine in private. He loves me. He says very nice things to me. In public, he wants to fight me. In private, we are very nice to each other. Very lovely, very loving indeed. So, um, David, are you aware of, the, of, the, of, his, of Mohammed Hijab's message to the Jews? I'm not, I don't know what he said in it, apart from people were messaging me saying that he was talking about what the Quran says, of course, that the Jews should long for death or something like that. So <clears throat> um, I don't know how, I don't know how bad he made it in his video, but it is his job. Um, so I'm, I'm guessing it's not great. That's good. That's good. I'm pre I'm pretty sure it will be great. So um, and when we want to jump in here and have a look at that, uh, Miss B said, "Take bets every live stream. How many minutes late? If you did that, we, I I should I should I'm thinking I should get into the business of uh, <laughs> yeah. betting, uh, collecting bets based on how far delayed we will be. Of course, I can't participate in it. But it would be funny if we if it would be funny if we ran the betting site. Yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah." Yeah, or or we should just register our live streams on a major betting site where everyone can go on and bet, uh, based on how late we will be. He said based, based. Uh, Black Milk. He said, "Guess the tune." His name is Muhammad. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Answer: Rock the Casper. I don't even know how that goes. His name is Muhammad. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. That's how it go. Oh, I see. I see. Logan said, rehabilitate Islam. Nope. Never put it down. Apu Pucker Al Puff Daddy says, Al Puff Daddy says, no Democrat has any moral authority to condemn Israel on that errant drone strike. August 29th, 2021, three adults and seven children were obliterated under orders from President Biden. Not one U.S. official fired. I would always 
generally disagree with um, making this about Democrats and Republicans or leftists and right wingers and all that. You said Mike Winger. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, so this is again one of those situations where uh, during the war between Israel and Hamas, a big mistake happened and a big tragedy happened of these uh, seven um, humanitarian rights workers, humanitarian workers, um, were, were killed in a terrible miscommunication and attack where apparently um, the operators in charge were under the false assumption that these vehicles are being used by Hamas. Um, and the Israeli army, the IDF, thoroughly investigated the case and admitted that um, the World Kitchen, what's it called again? WCK. They did nothing wrong. They did everything right on their part. They informed the Israeli army um, as expected as they're supposed to do. Uh, everything went uh, well on their behalf, but there were internal communication failures in the IDF, which is why this uh, strike was conducted. And I, the IDF took full responsibility, said it is awful, it is our fault, it should have never happened, and then and then took action against um, personnel involved necessarily. Um, and, and this is how you take responsibility and how you show accountability. This is how it's done. And it happens during war. And all kinds of sides make such mistakes during war, including friendly fire, civilian casualties, which is called collateral damage, and so on. However, when it's Israel, the world goes crazy. Yeah. When you first do it, it's not like... Yeah. Yeah, like what right when right when this came up, that reminded me, and I didn't remember what the situation was. I just remembered that the U.S. bombed the Chinese embassy somewhere by accident, and so I looked it up. Yeah, it was uh, 1999. Uh, the U.S. bombed the Chinese embassy in Serbia, killing three Chinese state media journalists and outright or outraging the Chinese public. According to the U.S. government, the intention had been to bomb the nearby Yugoslav Federal Directorate for Supply and Procurement. Um, so anyway, their point was we were trying to bomb something else and bad things happen. So what you want, what you can always say to everyone, hey, try to be more freaking careful. Um, but you have to understand this does this does happen to everyone. Yep. And it so it's it's a it, I don't, I'm sure you saw it, but there are these things uh, like people are freaking out um, because the IDF apparently uses AI to select targets. It's the AI's monitoring stuff and then figuring out targets and then bombing them and saying, but it has a 10% error rate. So people are saying, hey, you're using a system that has a 10% error rate. And I'm like, that is messed up. You should use humans. And I was thinking, wait a minute. What if humans have a more than 10% error rate, right? Like, That's I don't true. even know. I don't know what the error rate for human beings is. So what you'd want is like some sort of AI system that is then like confirmed by a human committee. And so maybe that uh, reduces the rate. But yeah, the main issue is this happens to everyone in a war, in bombings and so on. You end up hitting some of the wrong targets. Everyone else eventually gets forgiven except the Jews. <laughs> If Jews are involved, then it's deliberate. It was planned. It doesn't matter how much it, it it makes them look bad and embarrasses them in the world community. They did it on purpose, and they're lying, and they shall never be forgiven. It, isn't it like isn't it like they uh the the U.S. ship they bombed because they thought it was an Egyptian ship back in like 1973, and that still gets thrown in our faces every day. You see, they attacked the United what States. What about this? They what attacked about him. You attacked the what U.S. I, I think I think Jake Shields just posted that like a day ago or something like that. Still bringing up the. You know what he also posts? Um, he re he started posting about blood libels because uh, people brought up blood libel, and he was like, "Well, what is blood libel? I looked into blood libels, and it turns out uh, Jews were accused in history of doing some things, and I'm wondering why they were accused. Looks like looks like they were indeed doing bad things." And he brought up a um, something. Here it is. I'll just put it on the screen. He brings up history. The guy who can barely read. Uh, something off his screen. Where is it? I can't, to, I can't read this on your screen either. Oh, okay, there we go. Tries to go into history and tries to tell us about what happened in history, and he goes into the um, into the 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 
blood libel of Trent, the Simon of Trent uh, issue, um, where a two-year-old boy disappeared and it took police days. And here is his misrepresentation. This is what he does. The two-year-old boy disappeared, but it took the police days for the father to convince police to search the Jewish quarter. He was found brutally tortured to death with his blood drained in the basement of Jews. If you actually read the historical accounts, this is not what happened. What happened is that Jews themselves <laughs> found the body next to their building, uh, adjacent to their to their to their basement, and reported the body. So it was Jews themselves who actually said, "There is a body here. What is this? Somebody must have done something to this child." And they go to the authorities. Later, uh, that is omitted when the authorities come and. It turns into a whole blood libel situation where uh, everyone leaves out the fact that Jews themselves reported the issue. And instead, it turns into uh, why was he found close to Jews? It must be because they murdered the child and used his blood for ritual purposes and so on. And um, then 15 men, indeed, that, that's, that's correct, 15 men were convicted of being uh, accomplices in the killing of this child and were burned at the stake. However, um, the convictions came after these people were brutally, brutally tortured and <laughs> under torture confessed to say, okay, okay, yes, I am guilty, I am guilty, I am guilty, okay. Um, if, if you know something about torture, it is that in today's modern times, uh, brutal torture and forced confessions are generally not to be taken seriously because they usually don't reflect the truth because people just say whatever to get out of the brutal torture that doesn't seem to end. That is what actually happened here. Jake Shields yeah. completely leaves it out and acts like the Jews were accurately found guilty because they did indeed do such things. <laughs> now, um, you are correct. Uh, you could take any random person off the street and get him to confess to killing JFK. If you yep. torture him and the only way to stop the torture is for him to confess. So that's how it goes. They put them in some torture devices and they say, hey, you want to stop this? All you have to do is confess. Uh, and here's what you have to say. Yeah. And that's why that's why you have to be uh, careful about confession. And to be fair, to be fair, I eat. This is even in my head when I see like the uh, the captured Hamas guys sitting in a sitting in a. Uh, sitting in an office and explaining the things that they've done. It's always like, there's, there's some doubts in my head about what this particular guy did. I know what, I know what Hamas did, Brother, what this guy, what, what this, what this particular guy is confessing to. I don't know what this guy's just been, been through as far as the torturing. So it's always in my mind. Same thing with, uh, with confessions in the U S if they keep a guy up for a day and a half and so on. And, and, uh, and the only way he can stop the interrogation is to confess. And so anyway, and that's a, but by the way, what you're talking, that, that's a principle, even it's even an issue in the U S where people aren't being tortured. They're just being interrogated hour after hour, after hour, after hour, after hour, and so on until they confess. People will, people will confess to things just to stop the interrogation that, that doesn't stop, let alone torture. Yep. Yep. That is an issue. Uh Plus, what's funny is uh, the, there are lots of uh, images, lo lots of videos now of Hamas terrorists. Um, yeah, well, let, me, let me remove this here. Of Hamas terrorists um, admitting that to have done terrible things like seeking out and shooting uh, Israeli civilians, uh, raping them, torturing them, and so on. And those people don't seem to be don't seem to have been brutally tortured. They just seem a little bit uncomfortable. Uh, but their their testimonies or the, their, their admissions of guilt were uh, immediately rejected, I'm sure by Jake Shields as well, because, uh, because you know, you can't trust it because, you know, they were, because they made those statements in Israeli captivity. However, he then goes to an event that happened many centuries ago where actual brutal public physical torture took place inhuman torture took place and confessions were then taken under brutal torture and he presents that as proof that jews engage in evil um, ritual practices this is just the dishonesty and stupidity of these people and by the way jews were not the only people who were subject to this kind of stuff um there are certain 
there are even some Christian groups that were subjected to treatments like that. And I talked about them before. And so, some conspiracy theorists actually have a have a problem with it. The, uh, the Knights Templars, they, um, they were an actual legitimate crusading Christian organization that were doing their best to serve uh, God and to fight for Christianity. However, they fell out of favor after a while and under the French king were accused of uh, worshipping a demon and uh, sacrificing children and things like that. And then they were br publicly brutally tortured and under torture, they were forced to confess that they did indeed worship some uh, demon named Baphomet. That is, that is where the whole Baphomet thing arises. Um, so... If you want to go into the history, things like these were not just done to Jews; they were also done to, um, to to Christians by Christians, or to Christians by Christian authorities. So, if you are somebody who is uh, who is a Christian and who wants to take accounts like these forced confessions by Jews seriously, maybe you should think about that twice. I would say. Anyway. Here is a meme. I saw. <laughs> uh, here's Candace. Candace, her job. And then why would the Jews do this? <laughs> um, hey, did you ever see this? We were talking about. Yeah. We were talking about Alex Jones the other day. Uh, there's this clip that I found genuinely. Kind of funny. It's only six you, seconds. You. No, you. So, no, you. No, you. 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 No, you. You. Both of you. Keep doing it. You're doing it. You're doing it. You're doing it. No, you. So, no, you. No, you. 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 No, you. 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 What, is, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> they act, acting like little children. Wait, so funny. wait. I was waiting for Alex. <laughs> waiting for Alex Jones to go. I said you, dang it. What the hell is wrong with you? Huh? Huh? Are you okay, frog? Huh? <laughs> Anyway, all right. Are you ready to jump into this, David? Yep. Such just some guy that said, where does one take AP? This is, I'm banning just some guy now. Wow. Uh, I'm having ND, would, why? Let's see. Giant Disco Panda said, what do you call a Saudi paratrooper? Carpet bomber. <laughs> no. Carla made a super chat. Thank you so much, Carla. Just some guy said, always equal insults. That's good. Apple Bucker said, Ex uh, excited for the eclipse. You're going to watch it. Thoughts? Yeah, I'm waiting for it just to uh, see all the uh, demonic rituals and all that to see where, where I can participate. And something there are some theories going around that uh, the eclipse is being used for certain um, rituals and conspiracies and all that. And I'm just looking around and trying to find them. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm very excited. It's going to happen on Monday. Anyway, let's start the video. Why is this muted? Because you see, Allah has spoken. <laughs> <laughs> the reason spoken about Jewishness. <laughs> what is he talking Jewishness. <laughs> about Jewishness. Is if I talk like this, I can say anything to you morons and you will cheer you know it's funny he's wearing a um a shirt that is supposed to be i guess the for, for the football team of palestine you know what's funny about that about this fact there was a uh, a palestine football team in under the british mandate of palestine but it was a jewish team so, <laughs> so the actual football team back then belonging to Palestine was the Jewish team. It was the team of Israel, of the land of Israel. Uh, that's what it was. But no, now it's, it's, a, it's, it's... No, it's a pretty uh, it's a pretty cool shirt. Uh, I like the ends of the sleeves there and stuff. I'm just wondering if they, uh, if they sell men's clothes where he got that. <laughs> uh, Prefix said, Apostle Prophet, when will you condemn Israel for kicking out 700,000 Palestinians for a war that other Arab countries started? Why would I condemn them? Yeah. For a war that other Arab countries started. <laughs> Which, of course, other Arab countries started it because the ones who actually participated in it didn't have their own country because they didn't want an own country. They were just uh, pledging their loyalty to other Arab countries. Yeah. That's it. That's that. 
Plus, they were not all kicked out. Many of them, probably even most of them, actually fled. Talking about Jewishness and Judaism, enough. And the reason why is because we've been afraid to be called anti-Semitic. But today, after I drink this cup of water, everything's going to change. <laughs> That's the reality of the situation. You see, I've found that as long as I do any sort of antic, no matter how stupid or silly it is, you guys are thrilled by it and I become your hero. <laughs> Gosh, you guys are dumb. Some guy. He's acting like he's speaking to children. I don't even get it. <clears throat> yeah, it seems like, like Sesame Street or something. Yeah, yeah. This is how we drink water. <laughs> okay, now show us how to drink camel pee. Hijab. What's a, what's a famous like a Norwegian name? Give me a name. Give me, give me one. Lars. <laughs> yeah, I, there's been enough Larses I've had to deal with in my life. So Lars, we've got him now. He said he's going to be anti-Semitic. I don't know why he's got this kind of accent anyway, but I can't do the Norwegian accent. It's very difficult to do. I must say, Mohammed Hijab, um, if you are considering going into co comedy, stand-up comedy, um, please don't. Yeah, come up with a good intro, man. This is the worst intro to a presentation about uh, hating Jews that I've ever seen. Yeah, uh, and I have to, I have to admit, I'm a little. Uh, I'm one. My grandmother was 100% Norwegian, so I'm uh, at least a quarter Norwegian. He's on uh, he's on some thin ice right here. Hey, what does Mohammed Hijab say when he goes to Finland? Uh, what he says, you finish, you finish, you finish. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh... hey, hey, that should be that should be a video. We need someone who can impersonate Mohammed Hijab, and he just walks down the street <laughs> in Finland. and He goes, "You're finished." <laughs> You're, You're finished. You're finished. Finish. Finish. <laughs> yeah, to a little kid. You're finished, boy. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> anyway, let's continue. If I tried to do it, it probably sound like a German. I bet you'd like that, wouldn't you, Hajar? Islam deals with Judaism as a religion. And there's lots of ayat. And this is actually, I know this is going to go online. This is my message to the Jews. <laughs> 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 and you know we're coming for you, no? It's okay. <laughs> I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. No, on a serious level, because Judaism is seen as two things at once. It's seen as it's an ethnicity and it's seen as a religion. So I'm not talking about the ethnicity, although that has some bearing of what I'm about to say. One of the main things about Judaism as a religion is that they do believe that this group of people, this tribe of people, are the chosen people. They believe in that. As, and the Quran challenges. As does the Quran. Oh, as there does it comes. the Quran. As does the Quran, right? There it comes. He will, I predict it, he will make it look like this is a totally Jewish idea. And he will make it also look like, he will also completely misrepresent what chosen people actually means yeah. within the context of Judaism. Yeah, I can Cho chosen, see the future. Yeah, chosen in the sense God chose you for his plan. And he says, if you're thinking that you're better than other people, I chose you because you're better than other people, you're not. If you do the same things they do, I will treat you the same way I treat you. I mean, I would treat you the same way I treat them. Yep. Well, in fact, you, the, 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 the Talmud, in fact, goes into uh, into lengthy bits of how being Jewish is actually a burden. And it's not something that is, that, that is desirable. It is actually, uh, why would you want to be Jewish? This is also a thing, like, uh, if, if somebody wants to convert to Judaism... Um, the, the rabbis in Orthodox Judaism are supposed to, supposed to discourage that person uh, and ask them several times if they are sure that they want to do it and then put them through a bunch of tests to then say, okay, okay, you know what? Okay, 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 you're ready, fine. If you so badly want to, yes, you can become a Jew. But um, because supposedly from their perspective, Jews have over 600 commandments, whereas non-Jews who believe in God and who are just uh, abiding by the laws of Noah just have a few commandments and that's it. So becoming a, being a Jew is 
is a burdensome thing. It is not a uh, a superior thing. That's not what it is. But I'm sure he will actually he will actually make it look like that. So let's see. Hey, hang on, hang on. I just I just yeah. did what I did want to point out. I did want to point out. Uh, Surah 2, verse 122. O children of Israel, remember my favor wherewith I favored you and how I preferred you to all creatures. Surah 2, verse 47, same thing. O children of Israel, remember my favor wherewith I favored you and how I preferred you to all creatures. Now, that's not the that's not everything the Quran's going to say. The Quran's going to say they rebelled and so on, as does the Bible, right? So... So the Quran is actually giving a condensed version of things that Muhammad heard about the Bible, but it's saying what like what could you possibly criticize from the Bible as a Muslim and saying, oh, it says that 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 God chose them and they rebel. Yeah, that's exactly what your Quran says. You, oh my goodness, I don't know what to do. Yeah, uh, so some people here pointed it out. Um, yeah. Uh, 613 verses 7. So this is the traditional Jewish uh, perspective that, that Jews uh, have, according to the tradition, I think, um, put together by Maimonides, by uh, Rambam, uh, 613 commandments, whereas uh, non-Jewish people, Noahides, would have seven commandments. And then the idea is, why would you want to become a Jew and uh, have to abide by 613 commandments when you can just stay and be and abide by seven commandments? So that is the perspective. Um, does that sound like, does that sound like a sense of superiority? No. <laughs> and it's, it's funny because you find it's not the entire reasoning, but it, it, it's part. It's part of the. I, it's part of the reasoning in Acts fifteen when the question, when it, the issue gets brought up, that some of the the Christians were teaching others that you had to become Jews in order to accept Jesus as the Messiah, and this becomes a big dispute. Uh, Paul and Barnabas are on one side of it. They come to and, and they bring it before the apostles, and the apostles have to actually think through this because they didn't. Right. It's not something where Jesus gave a command. And so they have to actually what do people do? The Gentiles need to become Jews in order to accept Jesus. And they conclude no. But part of the reasoning was, why would we want to saddle the Gentiles with a law that we've never been able to keep up with? We've never been able to keep up with. Why are we going to say they have to try and keep up with it? We never were able to keep up with it. Uh, um, so. Anyway, let's go. Let's see. If you, you're not letting the guy speak, man. Maybe he will say something important. Use this all the time. If you truly believe, if you truly believe that you are the chosen people, and it's mentioned twice, by the way, one in Surah, surah Baqarah and the other one is in Surah Jumu'ah, chapter 62 of the Quran. If you really believe you're the favored people that Allah has chosen, then go ahead and ask for death. Now, you might think, why is Allah saying this? Because if you're the favored person <laughs> and there is some level of afterlife, which they believe, although they don't spell it out. By the way, Jewish people don't have heaven and hell. This might be very surprising to you. Like yani, they might have some level of conception of the afterlife, but they don't have, Judaism doesn't have, like in Christianity and Islam, heaven and hell. It doesn't have this. SubhanAllah. What he is actually meaning to say, I hope, is that, that Judaism doesn't have the same strict distinction between heaven and hell, where good goes to heaven and bad goes to hell that there is an afterlife and then there are certain disagreements or it, it is rather rather vague what the afterlife how, how the afterlife will actually go and um and and the idea by the way is for both for jews and non-jews god has a plan in the world to come so that that is the jewish idea um i'm not sure why he can't well, I can't I can't even believe I can't even believe when they bring this up because this is there are lots of stupid things in the Quran. I mean, really, really stupid. Oh, Jews believe that Ezra is the son of God. And no, they don't. No, the Trinity is made up of God, Jesus, and Mary. No, it isn't. Uh, there are lots of the Quran says lots of stupid, stupid things. But this is this is up there on the level of stupidity. Um, because he pointed out you find this in Surah 2 and you find this in Surah uh, 62, where oh, and in both cases, it's, hey, if you believe heaven is just for you, 
then long for death. If you believe it's just for you and not for other people, then long for death. And you sit back and think, what does what does what's the actual reasoning there, right? What's it like? It doesn't make sense. If it's only for you, then then you should long for death. Why? What what if I, what if I believe that everyone is going to heaven? Why why would that make me want to die? Like what? Why? Oh, in other words, if I believe that everyone's going to heaven, would I want to die? Would I want to end this life? Or if I believe that half of people are going to heaven, um, should I want to die? Well, what if I believe I'm the only group that's going to heaven? Should I then want to die? It's like, uh, I don't know. It's pretty stupid. So th this is this is what he's bringing up here. Um... Uh, I don't know what's happening to this tab. This is what he's bringing up. In the Quran, in chapter 62, verse 6, it says, Say, O oh, you who are Jews, uh, if you claim that you are allies of Allah, excluding the other people, then wish for death if you should be truthful. But they will not wish for it ever because of what their hands have put forth. And Allah is knowing of the wrongdoers. Mm -hmm. what, it, what it's implying is that uh, the Jews know that they are wrong. And that they will be, I guess, punished. Indeed, the death from which you flee, indeed, it will meet you. Then you will be returned to the knower of the unseen and the witnessed, and he will inform you about what you used to do. This is, um, it's fine that Muhammad Hijab, with his, uh, with his pomposity, is bringing this up as an example uh, to, for what he wants to tell Jews. In my opinion, when you look at this, this is just, uh, this is kind of a demonstration that the author of the Quran doesn't understand Jews and doesn't understand Judaism at all. And it again, it just seems really stupid to me, right? It's, I mean, it's a, uh, it's up there with. Uh, it's no longer in the Quran. It was eaten by a sheep. But uh, hey, if uh, if a uh, if a man and woman have to work around each other, and you don't want them, and a ma woman's married, and you don't want them to commit adultery, just have her breastfeed him ten times, and then they won't be attracted to each other. <laughs> It's like that. It's like that level of stupid. Like, what are you, an idiot? Oh, you think you're going to heaven? So, so, so long for death. Long for death. Stupid. Yeah. So the idea is, uh, the, the Quran says, "A Jew." So if you think that you are friends of Allah, then why don't you, why don't you wish for death? How about that? Why don't you wish for death? You see, you are scared of death. Just maybe, the fact maybe, that you don't wish for death shows that you are scared of death because of maybe what will happen because to you. maybe because you believe this life is a gift as well, and you don't throw away something you've been given by the Almighty, huh? Primarily, yes, Jews have believed, and to to this day, today, still believe that life is an incredibly valuable thing and that this is a gift given by god for a purpose that um a jew needs to live out um to the fullest while following the laws given by god that that's it why in the world would you say to them oh hey jews jews why don't you wish to die that doesn't make any sense. From a Jewish perspective, that does not make any sense. It would go against the fundamentals of what they believe about life. And this is this is also the idea, this Jewish idea is also the idea behind uh, today, Jews appreciating life so much and valuing life so much and having a very, 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 very good place for just um, for everything that has to do with life, for the word uh, hi, for life and so on. This this is what Judaism is. The Quran's author simply doesn't understand it, and Muhammad Hijab is coming here and bringing this up as if it was a good point. It's just stupid. It's very stupid, and I have to say it's a bit hypocritical because there are you, you do have points where uh, the Quran says that you know the Jews and the Christians and the Sabians, as long as they as, as long as they worship God, there's no problem for them. But then you also have uh, eventually, eventually you have. Um, you have the claim that uh, Allah won't accept any religion other than Islam. And so the reconciliation would be Jews and Christians who actually qualify as Muslims. So they would submit to God. But if you look, it's OK, if you're a Christian and you believe that Jesus is the son of God, which is every Christian, then you don't qualify. And so who's this even talking about? Some mysterious Christian group that doesn't believe that Jesus died on the cross and doesn't believe 
he's the son of God. Like, what are you talking about? Who are these Christians who would qualify as Muslims? And then in addition to that, you have uh, you have the Quran saying that if you don't believe in Muhammad, then Allah has Allah doesn't love you. Allah ceases to uh, have any concern. Uh, you, it, there comes a point when Muhammad is introduced to you. This is Surah 3, 31 to 32 that Muhammad is introduced to you, and if you do not believe in him, then Allah is never going to love you until you do. And so Jews who love Muhammad and believe that he's a prophet, or Christians who who love Muhammad and believe that he's a prophet, I don't know people that are, put it this way, you're a pretty clueless Jew or Christian if you believe that Muhammad is a prophet, since he condemns what you believe. So it's like, what is the Quran saying at the end of the day? It's saying that Muslims are the only people going to heaven. And it's blasting Jews for saying that, right? It's blasting Jews for saying, oh, you're saying only we're the only ones who go to heaven. Yeah. And that's exactly what Islam teaches. Yes, yes, yes. And here is the verse which um, the idea which the Quran took from the Jews because the Quran's author didn't really understand it at first. It says, O children of Israel, remember my favor which I have bestowed upon you and that I preferred you over the worlds. Oh, for the worlds. Yes, that's what the Quran says. Anyway, let's see. By the way, interesting. Which is why the Quran it actually uh, criticizes this. And this is Allah saying this about Jews and, and uh, polytheists. You'll find them the most cautious about preserving their life. Yani, so say, yani. Allah saying this, Quran. ومن الذين أشكوا يود أحدهم لو يعمر ألف سنة وما هو بمزحزحه من العذاب أي عمر. He's saying that they wish to live a thousand years and he cannot live a thousand years and he's not going to be able. To... Wait, wait, you can't. Yeah. You see this, by the way. So hijab saying this from the safety of Norway. He doesn't yeah. go to fight. There are they, they've got a, what do they got Boko Haram and Al Shabaab and multiple ISIS groups and Al Qaeda and Hamas and uh, the Taliban, all these groups out there fighting the Kufar. And he's uh, he stays in a, what UK, Norway, places like that. And he's making fun of the Jews uh, because they preserve their life. What what does Hamas do? They run and kill a bunch of people. Then they would then they do what? They run and hide in tunnels. Hide. They run and hide in tunnels and hide long. Long for the day when Israel backs down because of screaming uh, college students. So, so they run and hide, and then they pray, "Oh Allah, please make those college students very persuasive as they scream. Make those protests very persuasive so that Israel doesn't come get us." Why? Because you don't want them to keep going and kill you. What? That, I, and, and by the way, I still to this day. To this day, I don't get these guys. Yeah. What about all the Palestinians being killed? I thought you guys loved death and were obsessed with death, and you're not scared of death. And ah, oh, what about all the Palestinian children? Wait, I, I thought you guys loved death. I thought you wanted death. Death is the great thing. You have nothing to fear for death. It's 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 the greatest thing in the world. No, oh, what about them killing? My goodness. I mean, put it this way: aren't aren't all those aren't all those people who die martyrs? According to you, here's the yeah. here's here's what I'm saying. <clears throat> Guys, I agree with I agree with you that you shouldn't want these people dying. But I'm putting out you guys are saying to Jews, well, if you really believe that you're the ones and you should long for death, you should want to it, you should be great, you should celebrate it, you should be ready to die. You should be running out when you see a missile drop and saying, please hit me right in my face. That's what you should be like if you believe this stuff. And then you see what they do and oh, we're whoa, please save us. UN, come save us, save us from death, save us from death. We we don't want to die. Yeah, so this is what Muhammad Hijab is referring to. Uh, where he says that this is a criticism of the Jews and polytheists. Uh, it says, say, if the home of the hereafter with Allah is for you alone and not the other people, then wish for death if you should be truthful. Funnily enough, this is not a Jewish belief. Yeah. It's a, the home and, of and, the hereafter and, and, with and, Allah is for them alone is not a Jewish belief. And I was pointing out, even if that were, even if that were the position... <laughs> The reasoning here makes no sense. It makes no sense. If you believe you're the only ones who go to paradise, then you should long for death. Why should that make me long for death any more than if everyone goes to paradise or if or if some people go to paradise? Why? Why would that make me, if I still view this life as a gift from God, why do I want to throw it in the garbage? Even if I believe I'm the only, that's what I mean. It's like, 
The author of the Quran seems really, really stupid in his reasoning. It sounds like, some, let me put it this way, it sounds like the reasoning of a barely literate 7th century Arabian caravan robber. Yeah. That's what it sounds. It sounds like some dope is coming up with this stuff, not like not the the creator of the universe. Let me let me repeat this. Uh this is the this is the claim here put forth by Muhammad Hijab. Um, or this is what he is implying, and what some people are also thinking, and what Muslims think, because the Quran says it. Um Jews do not believe. Jews do not believe. Only we will go to heaven and we will have a place in the hereafter with Allah and everyone else will not. That's not what Jews believe. This is not a mainstream Jewish belief. So this is just ignorance on the Quran's part. So the punishment if you live a thousand years. That's what Allah says in the Quran. So you, I find this very interesting because I've been attacked on this basis. I had this debate with this guy called Unholy Shmoli. <laughs> And he was saying, like, you guys want to die, you want to die. It's, yani, I don't see why this is a criticism. We believe in an afterlife. Yes, we believe in Jannah. In fact, you should want to die. Calm down. Calm down, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Is that an ad right in the middle of his thing? He actually put a charity ad in the middle of his stream. Calm <laughs> down, calm down. If you give to... What is this? What is this? Man? In Wait. fact, you should want to die. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. It's just a break. I'm reminding you that when you are finished watching the video, huh? That you finish, finish below and donate now. This is the hero, man. This is the champ. You guys, if you're from another planet, if you just arrived here from Mars and you want to understand what what various religions do and their contribution to the world look at this guy <laughs> look at how he acts look at how he has become the hero of the ummah and that will tell you pretty much everything you need to know about islam there's more to learn there's the, it's, the stuff you need to know you can learn just from watching this now, there's all sorts of other things about you know child brides and everything else uh, killing apostates but uh, just watch this guy It'll give you a good idea of to, to what Islam has produced. Please don't. If the if advanced extraterrestrials came and the first thing they saw was Muhammad Hijab's videos here, especially with this ad break, they would probably say, screw this, destroy this planet. Destroy this planet, kill them all. Let's colonize it. And he was saying, like, you guys want to die, you want to die. It's, yani, I don't see why this is a criticism. We believe in an afterlife. Yes, we believe in Jannah. In fact, you should want to die. Calm down. None of this makes any sense. Okay, let's see what he says after calm down. Yes, we I should be clipping this and putting this up. Say, hey, what? The, the Allah he's, he's telling these young people, you should want to die. I mean, gosh, this guy might as well hey. just be like recruiting terrorists, future terrorists. You should want to die. You should want to die. You should want to die. All these uh, jihadis who go out, I'm not I'm not even talking about Hamas. I'm talking about the ones who go out and uh, attack people at a concert and so on. This is exactly their thinking. I want to die. I want to die. And I believe that the only way I'm guaranteed paradise is if I die while waging jihad. And so I'm going to go attack a bunch of people at a concert. And then I'm going to get my virgins that I get to deflower for eternity. Which is the most beautiful thing about Islam, mm -hmm. to be honest. Yeah. Yep. Sexy. Yeah. Uh, this this is, by the way, what this all all of this reminds me of. Here's Mohammed Hijab in his interactions with me, where he said to me, "If I were an anxiety-ridden, hate-filled, nihilist, atheist like a puss, I would consider suicide as a serious option. That is because the world offers such humans more pain than pleasure. The pain of being a coward. The pain of having no purpose. Just find a tall building and." By the way, by the way, hey, look, look at hold, what hold, he, hold, hold, hang on, hang on, hold, hold, look hold. at what he just said. Look at what he just said. This world offers such humans, quotation marks, you're not really human, more yeah. pain than pleasure. Notice the, notice the view. The world is more painful than pleasure. Therefore, you should prefer death. Uh, so, so, for, but, but keep in mind for, for, for anyone, if you're just talking about things that happen to you in life, that would be more pain than pleasure. And so from a Muslim perspective, you should want to die because then you just get the pleasure. 
And he's even saying for you that it's so much more pain than pleasure, then you should want to die just to, just, so that it's because it's even and it's all wiped out. Yeah. Yeah. What a yeah. sick, what a sick dude. But that's the thing. I, I want to give you sincere advice. I think you should commit suicide. Not because you are a talentless coward or because you are a waste of space. I think the world is offering you more pain than pleasure. It is not morally objectionable for you. So why not? This is logic. This is logic 101. Of course, makes complete sense. Uh, it's not morally objectionable to you. So just go kill yourself. What's the problem? <laughs> is it, isn't the reasoning amazing though? Jews should want to die. Atheists should want to die. Everyone should, should want to die. But we're the only ones who want to die because our religion has programmed us to want to die. And so we also want to die. Everyone wants not, to die. Yeah, we want to die. So I'm going to go speak in Norway where I definitely <laughs> will not die. And, uh, and I'm going to be defending Hamas to keep Hamas from dying because yeah. I don't want them killed by Israel. So I'm going to go rally against the Jews so that Muslims don't die because we don't want Muslims to die. And I'm going to simultaneously complain that Muslims are dying while saying that we should all want to die. What an idiot. Like, gosh, I mean, he sounds like the same. I mean, think about this. This seems idiotic to us. This is exactly what you find in the Quran. So as yeah. stupid, as stupid and idiotic as we find Muhammad Hijab's words right here, it's exactly what you find in the Quran. He has the exact same mentality as the creator of the universe. Are you kidding me? Yes. Of course he does. Of course he does. What's there to do? Of course he does. This is uh, very. This is some very solid advice. Muhammad Hijab, I would just say, um, why don't you just take your own advice? Why don't you take your own advice? And, and we know you want to die. You want to, you long for death. Because you think that you will then go and deflower virgins and all that. Um, if you can't, if you can't do it to yourself, which is understandable, which I would never encourage, then why don't you, you know, seek out a way and participate in activities that will bring you closer to that instead of spending your time there in your comfortable place in England. And uh, traveling around Norway. Yeah, with your secret second, your secret second, third, fourth wives, probably yeah. child brides from uh, from your Dawa buddies, because you're all passing your daughters around. Yeah, yeah. Go and get your virgins, Muhammad Tajab. Don't wait. Go get your virgins. Get your virgins with transparent skin. Yeah, and in all a, that. In other words, in other words, let me go ahead and say it. We say we want to live. And don't want to die because, well, I can't say what AP believes, but uh, I believe life is a gift. And so I don't want to die. But notice, we're honest about the fact that we don't want to die, right? We like you, you, could, you could say, hey, I, I believe I've just got stuff to do in the world. I can improve this world with my life. Why would I want to die? You guys are saying we should want to die. We should all want to die. And you obviously don't. So who's yeah. the liars here? We're honest I'm about life, man. Yeah, we're honest about what we want. And you guys run around saying that you prefer death when hijab, there are plenty of terrorist battles going on right now. You there's any number of terrorist organizations you could join and on a battlefield, you'd be a pretty freaking easy target. Cuz you're like a foot taller than everyone else on the battlefield. So you'd be an easy target. You don't want to die. Isn't this amazing? I mean, you see He's a, he's appealing to a passage of the Quran where he's saying, you see, this is saying that the Jews are lying about what they believe deep down. They know it's not true. And this guy runs all over the planet. We want death. We love death. We love death. We love death. We love death. Hey, Muhammad Hijab, it's very easy for you to die if you love death. No, I don't want to do that. I'm going to go to Norway. Mm. Yeah, muta, yeah, yeah. Muta, little yeah. Muta up there. Muta, muta, muta. Get my muta on. <laughs> I, I value life. I value life. I don't. Uh, I think uh, as long as I have it, I would like to continue and would like to live it out to the fullest and uh, do the best of it uh, and, and try to do whatever I think is, is good in the world. I don't, I personally don't have that perspective, dear Mohammed Hijab. The problem, the problem is yes, Jews love life. Yes, I love life. Many others love life. You, Islamists, you don't love life. You love death, and you don't just want it for yourselves. You also want it for everybody else. And that is the problem.
if you could just you know leave your desires to yourselves or keep your desires to yourselves it would be okay you know keep your beliefs keep your ideas keep the things that you desire so much to yourselves that will be okay just go and do the thing that you love so much just don't bother others that's the problem Mohammed Jaff. that is the problem that's why nobody likes you <laughs> but he would also be an easy target because he, in, in on the battlefield he would be like i'm strong i'm a hero Please i'm not run. i am not going to hide in this trench i will be run out Me there with King my chest with my chest and then he would get shot I don't believe that. I think he's a coward. <laughs> at the at the end of the day, I think the man's a coward. <laughs> Keep in mind, serious, seriously. I mean, we've talked about this before, but every encounter anyone has with him has has there been any encounter with him where he was he did not employ some sort of deception in, no. involved? No, I've never I've never heard of somewhere I've never heard of an encounter with him where he wasn't people didn't walk away going, "Oh, this guy's a compulsive liar." Look what he did. Yes. Indeed. And that's that's just not that's just not a sign of a man who's strong and confident, right? That's a that's a that's a sign of a man who is a coward at heart, and so he believes that he has to get by by deception. Yeah, the Uralic tribe said, "AP, did you ever hear about the movie documentary from Turkey called Dying for Divorce about women being abused in Islam? It's really messed up. I haven't heard of it, haven't seen it, but uh, from Turkey, so being Turkish alone is already abuse." Uh, so I understand that, um, but yeah, I, I, would, I would need to look into that and see. Interesting. Pat's leather strap says, "Did you see Saudi Arabia's new Mohammed robot uh, assaulted a female journalist? Wasn't that like, uh, wasn't it groping? Didn't it yeah, like it went to grab her butt. And they had their new look at our new robot, and she's reporting <laughs> on it. The thing reaches out and grabs her butt or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, that's, that's what happens. You want it's trained to do that if you don't have a burka on." Yeah, you cover yourself up. You whore. You're asking for it. That would, you around. know what's crazy? Like some of these, some of these guys, like what they want in life and how they believe that women who do not veil themselves should be treated. It would be like their dream to invent a robot that goes around molesting and groping and beating any woman that doesn't that isn't dressed like a uh, an Arabian ninja or something. Yes. Yes. John of all trades said, I picked the cow because I'm a butcher. Mohammed Hijab sounds like a fake generic Muslim name. Call me David Megan. David Megan. David May. How do you say that? <clears throat> I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Sanke so said, Is AP still depressed? Erdogan's party lost the election. Yeah, I have been. Uh, I very much gave up on life after the uh, Erdogan's party. Did you, in the I election. have some advice for you, AP, what you should do <laughs> since this world <laughs> is giving you nothing but pain. <laughs> Mary Max said, Shout out to Chase Hughes. Please pray for him and fam. I don't know who that is. Then I'll look it up while you okay. go through super. Chat. Gwyneth Isaac said aid workers in conflict zones know the risks. Rest in peace. Indeed, indeed. It's tra tragedy. Oh. That one says Coleman said, Hughes. D. Boudreau said, AP, did you see Coleman Hughes' interview? Uh, I haven't seen it at all. No, I wait. Don't know. Is it Coleman Hughes or Chase Hughes? That's two different Hugheses. Um, it's I don't know some Hugh. Who is it? Who is it? Okay, look it up. See what it says. What does it say? What is it about? I don't know. I don't. Effectively, care right if you believe, <laughs> if you believe you're the chosen one, you don't really need to do much. You're a chosen one by accident of birth. You're. You absolutely look, look what a freaking dope. So he's saying, God, <sighs> think about what he's saying. He's saying that, that, that Jews believe that they can do whatever they want because they're chosen. My the goodness, the, enti the entire, the entire, the entire book of Jeremiah is about this. The entire giant book. As far as number of chapters, Psalms is the longest. I think Jeremiah by word count is the longest book in the book. The entire book is about Jeremiah confronting false prophets who were saying, since we're chosen, we're not going to be conquered by the Babylonians. And Jeremiah saying, no, you've rebelled, and you are going to be conquered by the Babylonians because you rebelled against the Almighty. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what you can trace your lineage back to. You're, go you're going to face judgment right now. The entire book, and even, if, even when you look at the passages in the Torah that are about, the Jews being chosen for what God is going to do. Um, there are all these warnings. If you, if you rebel, I'm going to treat you just like those other nations that I drove out. 
It's going to happen yeah. to you too. What's the job saying? The Jews believe, the Jews believe that just because they're chosen, they can do whatever they want. What a, my goodness. This guy, this guy calls himself like a scholar of religions and so on. D Muhammad Tijab, did you actually read the Bible? Uh, you, you are supposed to be knowledgeable in these, in these things. You're supposed to have studied this. You're supposed to be an expert in this, according to yourself. So um, did you actually, actually read it? For some reason, I can't pull up the Bible uh, gateway. Bible gateway is, doesn't work. Okay, hey. now it worked. Um, uh, I was going to go for a specific passage here. I've got a pass. I've got a passage just because someone put it in the super chat. They put uh, what? what? Uh, they put Deuter they put Deuteronomy uh, 30. They put Deuteronomy 30. Um, they put Deuteronomy 30, 19 in here. I'll read the entire passage. All right. So okay. this, is Deuteron this is Deuteronomy. This is this is the Torah here. This is the Torah. God says to the children of Israel, see, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I command you today by loving. So this is this is Moses before the, the children of Israel going to enter the land. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I command you today by loving the Lord your God, by walking in his ways and by keeping his commandments and his statutes and his rules, then you shall live and multiply. And the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you're entering to take possession of it. But if your hearts turn away and you will not hear, but are drawn away to worship other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall surely perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are going over the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I've set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life. Choose life. It's an order. It's a command. Choose life that you and your offspring may live loving the Lord your God, obeying his voice and holding fast to him. For he is your life and length of days that you may dwell in the land that the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob to give them. So two major refutations of what hijab has been saying. So you've got that they are commanded to love life and to choose life and not to choose death. And he's saying, well, if you, if you really believe, then you should choose death. Really, you should disobey God if you really love God. That's what you're saying, hijab. And the other thing is hijab saying that Jews believe that since they're chosen, they can do whatever they want. When they're repeatedly warned right here in this passage, if you, if you don't obey, then guess what? You're not going to last long. You're just not going to last long. You're going to die. So he, let, let's let's look at this this section once again. This is just such a I can't believe I'm hearing this from Muhammad Hijab. If this was just some regular guy on social media bringing this up, I would say, okay, yeah, you you clearly don't understand what this is all about. Uh, but it, it is this guy who claims to be an expert now on uh, on religions, uh, on 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 um, comparative religion and all that. So let's see what he's Those saying. I'm not saying effectively. If you believe, if you believe you're the chosen one, you don't really need to do much. You're a chosen one by accident of birth. You're the chosen guy. You're the one. Allah, you're so special. Allah chose you. So you really believe this? And why are you why are you here in this dunya? This is a very Islamic understanding of what chosen people mm -hmm. would be. So what he is because. He is misunderstanding it, misrepresenting it primarily, I would say, because he is interpreting the whole chosen people aspect from a uh, from a Muslim perspective where he thinks, oh, you know, in Islam, in Islam, we as Muslims, if we are good Muslims, if we are perfect, then we go to heaven. And if we are not good enough, then we go to hell. And if we're not Muslims, then we will go to hell. And so he looks at Judaism from that perspective, from that lens and thinks, OK, in Judaism, you are already chosen. That means you don't have to do anything. You will go to heaven anyway, because that's all. That's all this is about. To him, religion is all just about that: going to heaven or going to hell. That's it. That's it. It's, it's as simple as that. Muhammad Hijab, you are an absolute imbecile. You are a complete ignoramus. You are a complete idiot. You don't know what you are talking about. You seriously do not know what you're talking about. A regular person who is educated in uh, Judaism, who is educated in the field of comparative religion, in these fields, if, if they listen to you and hear you say these things, they will think you don't know what you are talking about. David just summarized it. 
in in Judaism, the idea, not e even in the Bible specifically, you don't even have to, you, you don't have to understand Judaism. You can just read the Bible, right? You can read the Bible and you can see in there what exactly it means to be the chosen people. It doesn't mean, oh, you're special. You will be, you will be treated like a king and you will go to the good place no matter what you do. No, that's not what it is. That's not the idea. The idea in in Jewish thinking and in the Bible is that you have a special covenant with God that God chose you not to be kings but chose you to follow certain laws very closely and very strictly in order to be a light to others and in order to keep a covenant, a close relationship with God. The Jewish idea is that if you do not properly observe the covenant, the commandments that God gave you, then you will lose God's favor and you will fall from grace and be punished and be severed again and be all over the place again and you have to be as good as possible this is why for example um uh, if you go to israel uh it's it's a very interesting thing to observe um especially ultra orthodox jews will go around preaching to other jews in the streets their idea is uh they want to preach to other jews in order to encourage them to uh, observe more of the commandments of the of the mitzvot, the mitzvah, uh, the commandments, in, in order to collectively, as Jewish people, follow God's covenant, follow God's laws. That's what Judaism is. It's not like, oh, we are chosen people, we are special, we will be treated like kings because we were born as Jews. We don't have to do nothing at all. That's not what it is, Mohammed the Job. Are you are you dumb? Hey, th think about how he would how he could defend himself here. All right. So the 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 issue we would want to the issue we would want to bring up after pointing this out is okay hijab there's two possibilities either you're completely ignorant of what Judaism teaches and and what Jews believe and here you are on stage educating other complete morons who don't know anything about it and they're just believing you and so you are actively misleading people with your ignorance so either you're ignorant you don't know any better you just don't know what you're talking about and yet you're talking anyway and misleading other people or you do know, you do know what Judaism teaches and what Jews believe and so on. And you're just lying about it. You're just lying about it. So you're lying to these people. So you're either ignorant or deceptive. It has to be one or the other. Now, how could he defend himself here? Well, that's exactly what Allah does in the Quran. So <laughs> Allah in the Quran, <laughs> he says the same things about Jews. So he's either ignorant or deceptive. So I'm just Im imitating Allah. And Allah says things like, Jews call Ezra the son of Allah. We can't find any record of any Jew in history. The Quran attributes this to Jews in general. It's a generalized statement. Jews believe this. According to Muhammad in the Hadith, in Sahih al-Bakari, the main accusation, the main charge against Jews in general on the Day of Judgment is not going to be you attack the Palestinians. It's not going to be there. It's not going to be there. That is not the charge against them. The charge against them is that they worship Ezra. That's the charge, that it will be yeah. brought against them. So what Muhammad Hijab can say here is, wait a minute, if Allah can lie about Jews, if Muhammad can lie about Jews, then why can't I? <laughs> um this is, by the way, seriously what uh, what what Islam teaches for those who are unaware, especially for Jews. Um if if a Jew hears this, they probably think, "Wait, what? What, what are you talking about?" But uh, seriously, what Islam actually teaches, according to the Quran and the Hadiths, is that Jews are condemned because they believe that Ezra is the son of God, and that Ezra is also God, and that they worship Ezra. Something happened in Muhammad's time, and somebody misunderstood something. Maybe they were uh, pranking him. I don't know. Maybe they were, they were trolling Muhammad, and Muhammad took it seriously. But uh, the idea is actually that Jews worship Ezra, which is why they will go to hell. And when you ask Jews, no Jew knows what in the world this is about, because there is no such 
Jew in history never happened. In fact, when I, I was how ignorant table, Islam is. Yeah, I was at a table. You were there, so you're an atheist. I was there. I'm yeah. a Christian. And then I think Stefan from Visegrad was there. Um, he's a Christian. Everyone else at the table were Jews. And I was sitting here talking to some Jews at the end of the table. And I started telling them about Ezra. I'm like, what? <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> I was like, so what if I went around asking Jews why they worship Ezra as the son of God? What what are they going to say? And he's going, he goes, you might want to start off with an easier question. Start off by asking, can you tell me one thing at all about Ezra? <laughs> and he said, he said, the only thing you'll, the only thing you're going to get at most, you'll get, well, I have a cousin named Ezra. <laughs> like that's it. That's the only thing they would know. Yeah. Um, the proof for that, by the way, is, um, so one is in the, in Quran chapter nine, verse 30, but the other, this is an authentic, uh, Hadith, an authentic report attributed to Muhammad, Sahih Bukhari 7439. Uh, it mentions here Ezra directly, and it says, Muhammad says, uh, it will be said to the Jews, what did you used to worship? They will reply, we used to worship Ezra, the son of Allah. It will be said to them, you are liars, for Allah has neither a wife nor a son. What do you want now? They will reply, we want you to provide us with water. Then it will be said to them, drink, and they will fall down in hell instead. Yeah, and then keep, Christians keep are asked, yeah. and they yeah. said, then it will be said to the Christians, what did you used to worship? They will reply, we used to worship Messiah, the son of Allah. Look here, when it comes, and this is the indication that this actually means what it clearly means means when you read it on the surface when it comes to christians it does say so christians will say we used to worship the messiah the son of god right mm -hmm. but uh, apparently jews here when they are asked will also say oh we used to worship ezra the son of god excuse me which jew ever can ever said that and this is talking about jews collectively yeah so it's both muhammad and the quran it's both Muhammad and the Quran, and in both places. So this Surah 9, verse 30, and it's uh, here in the Hadith and in other Hadiths, where there's a parallel between what Christians do and what Jews do. The Jews are taking Jesus as the Son of God, and the Jews are taking Ezra as the Son of God. And this is why we have to be subjugated. And this is going to be the main accusation against us on the Judgment Day. But you're sitting here looking, going, okay, I understand what it's saying about Christians, but what are you talking about with Jews? <clears throat> and it's just, guys, like, how, how wrong do Allah and Muhammad have to be to the point where you can you can check with every Jew in history and find out that you're completely wrong and Muslims will still believe it? Alhamdulillah. This is it. This is the ignorance of Islam. Outside in the minus 20 degrees and this one and that one. And why are you living this life? There must be something better waiting for you. If I truly believe this, I'd, every day I'd say, let me die, let me die, let me die. I'd even be going around the highways like this. Wait, what are you saying? He's saying, if he, do you hear what he just said? If yeah. I really believe this, if I really believe I'm going, I'm going to heaven. So I would say, let me die, let me die, let me die. That's what he should be doing all day long, according to him. He believes that he's going and getting his virgins in paradise, right? This, this is so incredibly stupid. Muhammad Hijab believes that uh, that so he he would rather die, right? He wishes for death. He longs for death, and um, he would like to die and go to the afterlife. However, he also believes that he's not allowed to um, to kill himself, so he can't do that. He's not allowed to bring about his own his own death and basically just induce suicide so he can't do that he can't do that he has to follow rules within islam in order to um be rewarded instead of being punished what he doesn't seem to understand is <laughs> in judaism jews also don't believe that you can just kill yourself <laughs> and go to god Jews also believe that you are um, in this life that God gave you in order to follow God's commandments properly.
And of course, it's not as simple as it is in Islam, where you're like, oh, do this much good and you will get this many treats in heaven and do this much and you will get this many no bad dogs. Um, so it's it's more complex than that. But yeah, Jews also believe that they have to live, continue and follow commandments. How in the world do you, are you not getting this? Wow, man. This guy has no brain. The dunya is ikhtibar, is test, is pain, is party, is things. If you, Allah is saying, if you really believe this about yourself, and you really believed in some level of an afterlife, then you should want death. But then Allah says something else. It's two verses. They don't and they won't ever ask for that. Because of what their hands have put forward. That's what Allah says. They know they're not going to ask for that. So yes, the Quran does speak to the Jews directly. And what that and what that means, what the Quran basically is saying here is that Jews know. Jews know that they are wrong. Jews know that they are engaging in evil, which is why they will not ask for death, <clears throat> because Jews know that Allah will punish them, that there will be a reckoning for them. Dude, think, think about this. Think about this. Because, like, even someone with a donkey brain like Muhammad Hijab, like, how does he not spot how this flips on him? What's he saying? He's saying, if you believe this, then this is what you will do. But you're not doing this, therefore, you will not believe it. Therefore, you don't really believe it. So if you believe this, then you would do this. But you're not doing this. Therefore, you don't actually believe it. Right? So that's the argument. So as far the logic is sound, so the question is whether the premise is true that if they believe that this is what they would do, right? No, because what they believe is that life is awesome and you're supposed to love life and you're supposed to choose life. It's a command to choose life. That's what they believe. So you can't say, "Oh, I really really want death." You'd be disobeying what you believe. So the premise is false. The premise is false, right? The first premise of the argument is false therefore does it apply to jews does it apply does the argument apply exactly to muhammad hijab if you believe this and you believe you're getting your virgins in paradise and all this stuff all this stuff you believe then you should do what then you should long for death and you should go out and join some group that's fighting the kufar and die in the process if you believe this then you would do this premise two you're not doing this conclusion therefore you don't actually believe it's in other words, it's Muhammad Hijab who's been exposed as a liar right here. Not there you go. not not the Jews. It's Muslims. It's Hamas. It's it's them that have been exposed. It's every Muslim who isn't longing for death, and every Muslim who's hiding, and every Muslim who's screaming, uh, no, stop the stop the killing, stop the idea of ceasefire, ceasefire, ceasefire. You've all been exposed as not really believing what you say you believe. This is it. See, Muslims are not longing for are not longing for death because they know because they know what their hand has put forth. See, so see, this is it. Muhammad Hijab exposes Muslims. <laughs> so, all right, uh, let's let's see what this is. People talk, kept talking, but yeah, I looked I up. So, so it's interesting that in a in a space of like three super chats, you you got Coleman Hughes mentioned and Chase Hughes. Chase Hughes is a different guy. I looked him up, and he was someone who I can't watch the video. He posted a video, so I'd have to watch that afterwards. But he posted a video about just looking at the comments, some sort of a, a brain disease or something like that. He's got some, Ooh. you know, something. So anyway. Oh yeah, I, uh, I see you now. Twelve minute video. I'll check it out. I'll check it out afterwards. Um, I'm gonna. I want to quickly look at this. What is this about? If you ask the question, what is unique about this war? What is different about this war than all other other wars? It's it's not the civilian death toll. the The ratio of combatants to civilians is. I think it's better than the American armies. Well, thank you, uh, thank you for somebody mm. pointing this out. Thank you. When we got Good ISIS out of Mosul, that was like ten thousand civilians dead to kill four thousand ISIS. This is nineteen thousand civilians dead to kill thirteen thousand. Um, it's not. A no, it's actually um, to to let's correct this uh, from a proper perspective. Um, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Look, here we have actually real accurate information. Brazil's Lula 
says 12.3 million children mm -hmm. were killed in Gaza during this war. And guys, they even put the they even put the note there. The combined population of Gaza and Israel <laughs> is 11 million. So guys, seriously, think about <laughs> think about how evil think about how evil Israel is when they've killed more children than the com they've they've killed more children in Gaza than the entire combined populations of Gaza and Israel. That is a special kind of evil, and people wonder why students <laughs> are protesting. You see, this is this is actually what makes Israel so special, and this clearly shows that Jews are indeed chosen and and also superior people, that they are capable of things that nobody else, uh, not just would do, but cannot do. They can kill 12.3 million children mm -hmm. when the combined population of Gaza and Israel is 11 million. So they kill significantly more children than there are people in Gaza and Israel combined, according to the Brazilian president uh, Lula here. Uh, <laughs> Now, th now, if you want to understand evil, think about how how they must have achieved this. They must have <laughs> forcibly impregnated tons of women, given them massive amounts of fertility drugs so that they all had like quintuplets, made them have tons of babies, and they killed them all. They killed them all until they got to 12.3 million. Gosh, this is bad. <laughs> Man, anyway. Uh... Uh, it's, it's not that... You know the the what's what's unique about this war unlike every other war that i could think of is is you have a an army in hamas that has perfected the art of embedding itself and meshing itself with civilians so that you cannot hit them without hitting the people around them other armies have done this but none have perfected it to the extent that hamas has no army that i know of in, in military history has had 15 years to build 300 miles of tunnel underneath a city that they don't use to shelter the civilians, but they use to shelter themselves so that they can operate right under a kindergarten, right under a mile. You know what's funny? Um, Go smart. From, uh, from the history of recent, of, um, I don't know, pop culture, um, over the, I don't know, video games, narratives, stories, movies, t series, and all that over the last decades. Trajectories. It was um, that there was there was there was always this idea associated with um, Middle Eastern Islamic or just Arab groups um, that it is their common specialty and method to use to use um, terrorist activities and to use activities which show a complete disregard for human lives or civilian lives and a readiness to to just cause massacres among the other side and their own side and hamas is really not beating those stereotypes and and those allegations at the moment this is what hamas is being is is known for this is their specialty that they learned and that they present very, very well right now to make sure to use their entire population, which they call a nation of martyrs, as if it was a fantastic thing, as shield between them and Israel while provoking Israel and making sure the war goes on forever. Mosque. So this is a challenge no army has faced. And so that that's what makes this war different. And and yes, the the I agree with all of the the absolute tragedy and suffering of the Palestinian people. But it's what what creates that is the way Hamas fights. And either we can say one of two things: we can either say, well, Israel just Israel doesn't have a clean shot, and so they have to let Hamas get away with it because it's too much to bear. Um, but then we are essentially creating a situation where terrorists have found the perfect solution, which is that you can uh, cross the border. Go yeah, house to house. That would, be a, that would be a right. message to all. Hey, pause it, pause it, pause it, pause it. It's a perfect strategy. Because this is massively important. Uh, yeah. It's exactly what we've said before, that you got to think about the messages to future generations of terrorists and all the people who are calling for cease. I get it. I get exactly why you want ceasefire. I get it. I get I, I understand saying, hey, this is enough. How, how far do you have to go? I understand all of that. 
if you're actually thinking about the future and not just not just what's going on right now, but future generations of terror, there are, there are reasons that certain countries have a don't negotiate with terrorist policy. The moment mm -hmm. you negotiate with the terrorists, that encourages future terror. If a, if a, if, a, if a terrorist kidnaps someone and you say, okay, we're going to negotiate and going to give you everything you want, that may help get the release of that particular person, but it also sends a message to future generations, hey, you can get whatever you want. Just just start kidnapping people. So that's that's the reasoning behind it. But think about the messages to future generations. Israel, going along with what he just pointed out, Israel can stop right now and say, okay, enough is enough. We've, 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 everyone's had enough. We've, we've, we've made our point. And the, the takeaway message for Hamas and to all future generations of terrorists around the world is if you go and kill a bunch of people, then run it, just run and hide behind civilians and wait. And all the protests and so on will eventually, the, the protesters will get their way and you're fine. You can get away with it. You will get away with it. If, on the other hand, Israel doesn't stop, doesn't stop until ha Hamas is completely wiped out and eradicated. In other words, if they go to every single city, every single place, house by house, hunting down Hamas until Hamas is completely wiped out, that sends, now that's going to be messier. It's going to be messier. There are going to be more casualties. There are going to be more IDF casualties. There's going to be more uh, terrorist casualties. There's going to be more civilian casualties. But it sends a completely different message to terrorists of the future. The message that that sends is you are not under any circumstances going to get away with it. And we are willing to do whatever it takes to, to, to come hunt you down. Yes. So... There is no way, there is no way you escape this with your lives. It sends a very different message. Which of those messages do you want future terrorists to believe? Hey, I can get away with this, or I'm not going to get away with this, and I'm going to die if I do this. Which message do you want? There's also the short-term aspect, of course, the minor aspect, which is, um, aside, aside from that part, um, th there is a major misconception that people have, which is that, um, that civilian... Uh, areas or residential buildings, hospitals, official buildings, and all of that are off limits no matter what. That is not true. That's false. That's not true. According to international law, that is not true. That's not how it works. If that were true, then what Hamas, then Hamas could just do the following. They attack and cause a massacre and kidnap people and then they go and hide in apartments or they massacre people and then they go and go and hide in a hospital and then israel can't attack and they're like hey hey nah, 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 can't do anything to us that's not how it works yeah. that, that's not how it's supposed to work this is why under international law uh those places are are off limits unless one side uses them for military purposes in that case it becomes, with certain conditions, allowable for the other side to target those places. But Hamas continues to do that. They hide in civilian, in residential areas, in hospitals, in apartments, and, and under apartments, under hospitals, mm -hmm. under kindergartens, and so on. And once they are hit, they... Um, they say, "Oh look, they are destroying! They're they look at these monsters. They're destroying hospitals. Look at these monsters. They're destroying homes, because they know very well that most people around the world don't know. They don't think past the second step. They will just say, oh, Israel actually just targeted a an apartment. How bad? How evil? That's not how yeah. it works.' So again, at end of the day, th this is for all of us, ladies and gentlemen. This is for all of us. You cannot." let Hamas come up with a successful method of terrorizing people and getting away with it. Yep. If the if the rest of the Ummah is watching and says, whoa, they came up with a way to get away with it. Everyone, every terrorist group around the world is going to adopt the exact same method. They're going to run, kill a bunch of people and run and hide among civilians and hide in schools and hide in hospitals and hide everywhere else. And that's bad for the world. What's actually what's what's actually best, given the circumstances, is to let Hamas know that it doesn't work, and simultaneously to let all other future generations of jihadis know this is not going to work. You're not going to be successful with this. Yes. What's worse is they are actually forcing 
the army to kill their own population, to kill to kill their children. Hamas is actually forcing Israel to kill Palestinian children and Palestinian civilian families. This is what they are doing. And, and the IDF has no other choice. There simply is no choice. As simple as that for many for many of the reasons that this guy just explained and that we just talked about strategy can we live in a world where we allow that to be an acceptable strategy i don't think so and it's very it's very ugly to watch it's it's heartbreaking and i completely understand why people don't think the way i think when they see the videos i completely get it but i don't think we can actually live in a world where that's allowed to be a, a strategy I, much respect i appreciate your respect much respect to this guy that was that's good i'm glad that somebody says it so thanks for thanks to whoever recommended this oh that was d fix to the bunny d Boudreau. thank you israel it says there was a time oh, okay. ah, you see you see you see you see? Uh -huh. For example, that the Yani, you were chosen at one point in time. You were chosen. When you chose Allah, that's when you were chosen. This is not the Quran, this is me yani, making a distinction. People are chosen on the basis of them choosing Allah. <laughs> when they swerved Allah. I wonder how an average uh a religious Jew feels at this point listening to this guy uh arrogate and explain to them why they were at some point chosen but they are no longer because they don't choose Allah <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure there are some uh religious Jews listening right now or we'll be listening to this later but I, I i'm really i'm really curious how you feel listening to this nonsense from one yeah Jeopardy. yeah i think i think we can say that there is a message to the jews here there is a message to the jews from muhammad hijab and muhammad hijab's message to the jews is i'm an idiot and a liar that's it that's the takeaway message to the jews right now from muhammad hijab he's saying that he's an idiot and a liar uh, this is just so embarrassing. So of their hearts. You are chosen in as much as you choose Allah. You are chosen. And you can still be chosen. And this is my message to Jesus. You can still be chosen. The, the Quran is giving you, is extending the olive branch to every Jew in the world. You can be part of this community. Deedle fake says, says religious Jew here. It's about what I expect from this idiot. <laughs> I'm Jew, man. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jew, man. I love it. <laughs> uh, feels breathtaking, AP. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yes, you can be. This is what you Allah is telling us in the Quran. Yes. That there's something more. But then the question is there's something more. If your belief is one which is encourages preservation of life at all costs, and our religion is not that like that, and yes, preservation of life is more, is important, but preservation of religion is more important, and there's a concept of martyrdom, then I would consider that to be an advantage, frankly. Because as Robert Greene said, the one who's willing to commit suicide has the initiative. Now, I'm not saying commit suicide, anyone. This how I got him oh, here. No. no. The suicide mission here, bro. No, uh, it's just that's it's just something that yeah, we recommended I, several times to people. Guys, like, how many times is this guy, as well? How many times does he have to give these little caveats? Oh, they're gonna say they got me here right after he's like, hey, you should want to commit suicide. You have an advantage if you commit suicide. I'm not saying commit suicide, I'm just saying you have a really big advantage if you're a suicide martyr. And we've got our gangsters, you got a big advantage if you like that. Just keep that in mind, but no, that's not what I'm saying. And by the way, here's this very good quote, which I very much agree with, which I very much agree with. And I'm not saying, I'm not saying I agree with it. I'm just saying figuratively, the one who's willing to take it further. So oh, look, I mean, uh, and then the one here, who's willing to take it further. And then he stops. Did that just wonder, stop abruptly? Yeah, it just abruptly stops. And then it goes into uh, to them asking for oh, money man. to... 
wait, to right, donate. Wait, right when he's right when he's more. talking about the advantages of uh, being a suicide bomber, then he cuts it off. <laughs> Whatever he was saying right there. <laughs> he's talking about the adva the advantages, the benefits uh, of committing suicide. Yeah. He I mean, seems a, he seems to be an awfully obsessed with suicide. Yeah. Well, the the unspoken benefits. There should be a thing like a, a, an article, a ten great benefits of committing suicide, <laughs> written by oh. Mohammed Jab. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> Look at that dude, man. This is this is uh, the hero of of Islam. Like who who's who's bigger than him as far as uh, with the uh, young young Muslims nowadays? Nobody. This is the man. This is awesome. Yes. And you guys, 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 it's a, it's funny. You got all these guys thumping their chest. Oh, we got Muhammad hijab. I'm sitting there looking at this going, if this is the position your religion has been put in, I believe the almighty has delivered you into our hands by this. I, be I believe the almighty is destroying your religion using this guy. And what greater slap in the face could a Dawa guy have than the Almighty saying, I'm going to use you to destroy your religion? What humiliation, what greater humiliation could there possibly be? Yeah, I have the perfect song for this. To the brain, suicide, 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 suicide. <laughs> That is the worst thing I've ever heard <laughs> in my life. I would rather listen to Rebecca Black's Friday song a thousand times than just that 10 second clip you play. <laughs> Yo, I'm the top G here with the whole head. Let's talk about suicide. Yeah, 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 yeah. Gonna go try fix some girls because I'm fine. Yeah, got my brother Tristan. We're gonna have a three way. Oh, uh, smack a girl in the face, grab her by the throat, and choke her all day. <laughs> Why are these same people all obsessed with suicide? I don't, I don't understand. Like he he made one song to prove that he can rap, which by the way turned out horrible. People that is the worst thing it. that my eardrums and, have ever heard. And it's called suicide. It's like oh, yeah, let me make a song. Yeah, it's called suicide. 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 <sighs> suicide. Suicide. <laughs> 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 do it die do it die okay okay oh, i'll yeah. show you all how to commit career suicide uh, oh boy frankly because as robert green said the one who's willing to commit suicide has the initiative now i'm not saying commit suicide anyone just how oh, i got him here can someone about. please cut this video off real quick cut it off cut I'm it off cut it off i'm about to say something the one who's willing to take it further so okay. Oh, he cuts really. it off right there. I really wonder what he said after that, because um, as far as I gather, these are this is uh, the whole speech is recorded. There is no full version of it, but he took that part out and published it as a clip. Uh -huh. But yeah, he's basically telling Jews, "Oh, uh, why don't you wish for death? We're you should want to, to die. Commit, we're willing to commit suicide. You should want to die, just like me. I want to die. I want to die. That's why I'm good, and you are bad because you want to live. You are let me, stupid. Let me cut off the video. <laughs> Speaking about, by the way, earlier when I was looking for, uh, through his video, I briefly turned on this because it says Richard Dawkins' final dash hey, we... at fame. Oh yeah, I saw that. I was thinking, I didn't, I don't know what he said in there, but uh, Muhammad Hijab and Richard Dawkins. Those would be pretty good topics for a uh, for a live stream. So yeah, we, we, should, we should go through this. that on your we should go through that on your channel maybe. But I just yeah. want to quickly say what see what he says at the beginning here because I find it quite funny. Recently, science journalist and retired zoologist Richard Dawkins has made an attempt to become relevant again in the last moments of his life by speaking. <laughs> Yeah, notice it's always some motive like that. Like this guy who does nothing but strive for attention around the world, and he's a narcissist and an attention whore. Um, that's what he does. And Richard Dawkins, <laughs> keep in mind, I mean, not I'm not a no fan of Richard Dawkins, right? I'm not a fan of Richard Dawkins, but I mean, the guy has been at Oxford for a long, long time. I've said repeat to to his credit, I watched one of his lectures once and it was one of the most it may have been it may have been the greatest lecture i've ever seen from a just from a secular perspective okay. um 
but may have been one of the best lectures I've ever seen in my life. It, it, it was watching that. I was like, oh, I understand. Because I thought like, he's coming out with the God delusion. This sounds idiotic to me. Why do why is he so famous and so on? I watched one of his lectures and go, oh, I understand why this is, why this guy's a celebrated Oxford professor and so on. And then he's just in an he's just in an interview and people are asking him some questions and he answers the questions and points out pretty tamely, hey, uh, if I had to choose between a Christian country and a uh, a Muslim country, I would choose a Christian country every time. That's it. Guess and what? Guess yeah, what? Christian, yeah. So would everyone else. So would Muhammad Hijab. Has Muhammad yeah. Hijab moved to Saudi Arabia? No. Where does Muhammad Hijab and Ali da where do these guys want to live? Christian countries, that's where they want to live. And then they want to turn them into non-Christian countries uh, to make them more like the, you know, the hell holes that, that Islam produces. But I mean, it's just a uh, it's it's just amazing. <laughs> He's trying to be relevant. He's trying to be relevant by answering. A question, honestly. It's it's always about that. Instead of actually addressing what the guy said, he says, uh, uh, personally, as an atheist, uh, I don't like I don't like religion, and I I don't like necessarily believe in what Christians believe, but I appreciate Christianity. And then here comes Muhammad Hijab and says, "Oh, you see, hey, this old, see, the old man is attention. He's, he's about way, to die, and he's trying to stay relevant with this." <laughs> that that goes back to the Quran as well, and that everything wrong you're doing every time you reject Muhammad, it's because you're, you know, you're you got a small price. It's you're doing it for something. It can't just be because you know uh, I'm looking at this Muhammad guy, and I do not believe in him. Nope, it must be some ulterior motive. In Islam, there's always an ulterior motive for rejecting. Muhammad and Islam. There's some evil motive. And so what do we say? Like us, um, what are we accused of? If we say, you know, we're looking at Israel and Hamas, eh, we kind of hope Israel takes out Hamas. They're, oh, the Jews must be paying you. It always has to be some ulterior motive. And right here, oh, yep, it's uh, Dawkins can't just be speaking honestly, saying, I do not like the way things are going, and it does not look good if Islam comes to dominate this country. That does not work out well for us. And up, oh, he's just he's just trying to uh, get some fame. Yeah, it's a, it's also based on accusation. Like at least in our case, it is it is it is true that we are just speaking about this because we are being paid by Israel, by the Jews. But uh, in Richard Dawkins' case, the guy is actually genuinely stating his opinion here. So just respond to him instead of making these dumb accusations and thinking he's like us. Uh, Marisa Kennedy said Maggie Oliver, author of Survivors, was a UK police officer who worked on ape gang cases. Please consider reviewing an interview with her and explaining how much this has to do with Islam. Um, I shall make a note of this. I shall. I shall do so. Heroes Workshop says, who is Heroes Workshop? I see Heroes Workshop pop up in my chat as a verified account, a verified YouTube channel meaning that it's a channel that has over a hundred thousand subscribers who is heroes workshop heroes workshop who are you what what are you doing identify yourself now uh <laughs> heroes workshop uh makes cosplay templates tutorials and build vlogs that is very interesting <laughs> nice um heroes so, workshops yes what i was what? just gonna say maggie oliver's maggie oliver's uh book survivors is about the uh the grooming gangs in the uk she's a detective and uh yeah that was a 2019 book might we might want to check it out and see if you can get her on there we could or we could just uh go for that song. I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. I'm a Zabiba. <laughs> You're a Zabiba. Gotta bang my head and get my Zabiba. <laughs> uh, Sunan Ab Sunan Abu Dawood Hadith 2450. Mike Winger is a nerd. Sunan uh, Abi D. Wood. I like that. Sunan Abi D. Wood. D. Wood. Yeah, that's that. good. That's good. That's good. That's good. <clears throat> The the bouncy Zabuba says you two seen the Mahdi has appeared on YouTube. He's a clown. <laughs> I don't personally like clowns, but I will look for it and see what it is and just check it out. Hey AP, do you actually get all these messages from these guys? I get them. Uh... 
not terribly frequently, like every uh I get them all the time. Every month or two, I'll get a message, David. I am I am the Mahdi or I am the Messiah or I'm the second coming of Jesus and here's my evidence and it'll be this long thing and so you should support me or blah, blah, blah. And I'll go over to the guy's channel. He's got like 23 subscribers and so on. <laughs> and I can, you know, it technically wouldn't rule you out, but dude, you're going to have to come with something better than uh, <laughs> sending me an email. <laughs> you know what's funny? Um, there, was, there was a time several years ago where I was actually active on a... Um, a Turkish atheist channel until I decided not no longer to do that. Um, but they one day they called me and said that they would like me to have an interview on their channel with a Turkish guy who is known to claim that he is the second coming of Jesus and also that he is the Mahdi and all that. So um, I was like, what? <laughs> So I actually agreed to it, and I did talk to him live. And the funny thing is, um, despite me being very, um, very cynical, I, I I stayed quite respectful, quite okay while talking to him. But the very funny thing is, at the end, I had to do it. <laughs> I asked him, I asked him about mental health. I said, have you ever considered that you may just be suffering from a mental health problem? Like it may be schizophrenia or something else that causes psychosis. Have you ever have you ever had the the input of a psychiatrist or 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 something like that? And <laughs> and the whole team and everyone in the background was like, no, 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 no. Can you can can you make can you make up for that? Can you say something nice? Can you say something nice to to keep up the relationship between us and them? <laughs> but I I did actually say that, and the guy told me, "Oh, people can say whatever they want about my mental health, but I am I am healthy." <laughs> but that hey, actually so, happened. So this this Mahdi uh, this Mahdi has appeared. That's uh, yeah, he's got a channel. He's got uh, thirty some thousand subscribers, so you know it's authentic. Uh, but yeah, he looks like a guy who sits there in his hood in his in his black hoodie and proclaims himself. Uh, let me see. The about says the Kaim Abbas Al Sadiq Abdullah Hashim appeared at the age of 32 after the death of King Abdullah of Hejaz in 2015, raising the black banner that has written on it, "Allegiance is to Allah," and claimed to be Abdullah in the will of Muhammad, fulfilling multiple prophecies from Muhammad and the family of Muhammad. Interesting. Well, I, I definitely have to believe in this guy. That sounds legitimate. That, that sounds 100% legitimate. legitimate. That makes complete sense. This guy's got over a thousand videos. Of, wow. Wait, how yeah. many subscribers? 37,000 subscribers. He's got a thousand videos. So that's cool. That's cool. Tanzil Muslihud said, did Ibn Abbas and uh, Ibn Kathir think the Bible was corrupted? Um, as far Ibn, as Ibn, Ibn Kathir, Ibn Kathir, uh, yes, because he's much later. That's well after people know what it says. Ibn Abbas, debatable at best, because you have passages where he clearly thinks Allah's protection is for all the books and not just the Quran. There is, you have a couple of hadiths that are attributed to Ibn Abbas where he contradicts some of those other things if you interpret them in the way Muslims interpret them. I'm not sure that Muslims are interpreting them correctly. So I'll Correct just, me if I'm wrong, there be, is a hadith that says, that says that, Ibn, that uh, it's, it's Ibn Abbas, I think, who says that Muhammad said, uh, why would you read the Torah when you have the I think it's just revelation. I think it's just Ibn Abbas who says it. I mean, Muhammad yeah. can say things like, yeah, w why would you need to go to those people when you've got the book? There's nothing about that there. As far as what Ibn Abbas is saying, yeah, we'd have to look it up. But yeah, there's there's a hadith that's just Ibn Abbas. He's not citing Muhammad or anything. And he's telling people, hey, why are you going to them when when you've got the book? Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean, I mean, just just uh, just that statement. It doesn't it doesn't mean that those books were corrupted. No, it just even, means that Muslims are not supposed to read them because they now have the final revelation. And that is what they're supposed to focus on. Yeah. And the point is, uh, if you say if you have if you have a passage and you interpret it as Ibn Abbas saying that the previous scriptures have been corrupted then you you'd have a contradiction because in other passages he clearly held that it the earlier scriptures hadn't been corrupted and notice were most extreme case 
if every if every commentator ever on the Quran says the Bible has been corrupted, but Allah and Muhammad said they haven't, then what do you do? In other words, in other words, if a Muslim, because I'm saying this because it comes up repeatedly in my debate with Shabir Ali, I kept bringing up, hey, look at what Allah says, look at what Muhammad says, look at what Allah says, look at what Muhammad says. And he goes, ah, oh, but Ibn Abbas, like what? If Allah says those books are as good as gold and you have to judge by them and Ibn Abbas were to come along later and say, no, no, no. And you say, well, I'm going with Ibn Abbas, heck with Allah. But what are you? you <laughs> according to Muhammad, you worship Ibn Abbas, you worship him. Interesting. That's That's beautiful. That's what they do. Um, since Jake and Kenneth are both running from a debate, why doesn't AP debate Ben Shapiro to get humiliated by a Jew <laughs> rather than a Christian for a change? Hey, uh, look at my cow. Look at the, the red, red cow. cow. <laughs> um, I'm not sure. If, I'm, I'm, tr I'm, I'm going to try to arrange that. Uh, I would like to be humiliated by a Jew. Uh, Carla says forgot my message i sent an email with fan art for you guys to ap if you could check after stream would be forever grateful i will check that out carla thank you appreciate it tenzil muslahid said oh i already read this what's wrong with you man chad person says chad chad parsons said i live in san antonio mm -hmm. and the eclipse is going to get a rain out oh, tourist traffic is still going to make life lightly slightly worse doesn't that suck you're in san antonio where it's normally it's normally better weather down south as far as seeing the sky. Yeah. It's normally better weather. And you have like a once in a lifetime opportunity where the where the eclipse, solar eclipse, is coming right, right through your town and clouds. Can't even see it. Yeah, I'm personally going to go and see the eclipse with my little child on I Monday. A, I am as well. That's why I won't be live tomorrow. I'm going to be driving. S so yeah, that's what they do. <clears throat> Oof Tastic said later early, it's the 7th of April where I am. So I just wanted to say happy birthday and God bless you, David Wood. Thank you, sir. Uh, you are the first person to wish me happy birthday because uh, the day before my birthday is not my birthday. But if it's April 7th where you are, then yep. Is, is tomorrow your birthday? Yep. Lonnie Crow said, the guy who said Palestinians were kicked out because of other Arab countries is wrong. The Palestinians started the civil war right after UN partially. Yes. What happened is uh, the Arab side attacked the Jews um, of the region repeatedly in the beginning of the 20th century, specifically in the in 1929 and in, in 1936 to 1939 but also in the 40s and in 47 the arab side started a civil war which included heavy attacks on the jewish community and the jews were predominantly throughout that entire time in defense against the attacks coming from the arab side in 1948 uh once the, the 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 Jews declared um, the independence of the state of Israel. It broke out into a full fledged war when Arab countries joined to help, uh, and their aim was to destroy Israel and kick out the Jews, and to prevent this from happening and to make it one Arab territory, and the Jews won. So sorry, but whatever happens as a result of that, uh, being removed from your place, whether that is because you fled and then you were not allowed to come back anymore or you were kicked out, I'm not going to shed a tear about that. <laughs> yeah. Garrett DeBleek says, is that scribble on hijab's shirt a writing or a semen? It's semen. Well, uh, Mary, yeah, We need a child bride to scratch it off for him to find out. Yes, yes. Mary Max said, argument over Canaanite kids forgets post-abuse damage. There were no counselors then. Muslims need to understand child abuse does exist. Booyah. Yes, exactly. I'm not sure what exactly this is in reference to, but yes, I, I, yes. Arya Wasserman said, the Jews are no longer the chosen children. <laughs> the Jews are no longer the chosen children because Alan... <laughs> decided that they do not love children firmly and deeply enough. <laughs> uh, just some guy. I'm sorry, P. There is no apostate from a false religion. Atheist prophet. Alhamdulillah. That is a, that is a beautiful point. I'm going to change my name. <laughs> Don't read it. 
Sir Dr. Whitemead said, serious question. Whose oh, milkshake do you think brings all the boys to the yard? <laughs> Lou said, I miss the good old polite Islamists of 2010, like Anjum Chowdhury and Sheikh Uthman. He wasn't Not in 2010. Sheikh Uthman wasn't around. And which Sheikh Uthman are you talking about? Not angry loud ones we have today, like Mo Job and Tate. But it's funny, Andrew. <laughs> Polite yeah. Islamists like Anjum Chowdhury. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The only thing that I remember from him, well, aside from his uh, protests uh, where they are asked, where they are holding those Sharia for the UK things, yeah. the only thing that I remember was is that interview uh, on Fox between him and Pamela Geller, I think. And whatever host that was sean uh, sean hannity i don't know who that was but uh there was there was a discussion that they had on on live tv where he called where he called her uh, a a a pig hmm. i debated him twice back in the day wait you debated and jim yeah twice one was on uh i think one was on whether sharia is good for the uk or something like this or for the world or something like that and the other was on whether Muhammad existed. Isn't that weird? You debated yeah. the OG terrorist. Yeah, it was two. Return. It was it was two on two. I think it was him and Sheikh Omar Bakri on debating on whether Muhammad existed. And it was me. And I have to start out. I'm sitting there with Robert Spencer, who doesn't believe Muhammad existed. And I say I have to start out. I have to say, look, guys, I believe that Muhammad existed. I don't believe you can prove Muhammad existed using your methods. I think. I think non-Muslims could have a better case based on ideas like the principle of embarrassment, as in no person would ever invent these kinds of stories about a prophet they're inventing. You just wouldn't make this stuff up. Uh, but you guys can't say that because you believe that this is all good stuff. So you guys just have to rely on sources and evidence and so on. And so I don't think that you guys can prove that Muhammad existed. And so I'm willing to, uh, willing to have this debate. And then his case was, his case was, well, the Quran says it, so it must be true. <laughs> The Quran says it, and it must be true. <laughs> oh boy, this is—is is this one of those videos? What is this? What? Uh, Huntress that we must be aware of any, any new woman. I found to see what use a woman can. This looks like it was recorded on a dishwasher. Um... Let's have a look at some more. The motto of the French Renaissance when they rose up against his. When did this happen? A long time ago. Wow. I probably like, I don't know, 2000. You're living in anarchy. He yeah, looked like a baby. Or something. Really? Wow. Really? Same background, baby. Same background. Wow. Same so bookshelf. You are butchered. Same books. How old are you? Like 12 or something? I don't know. Um, they put together a list of where women um, are suffering most in the world, where their rights uh, are, uh, are, are, are protected and where they're... Look at this guy. Um... Are all Western countries? This is funny. I never seen that before. I didn't even know that you debated. Uh, hey, just go to like my last uh, the terrorist OG. What? Oh no, no, this is just a clip. Oh, okay, this is broken up into different parts. Never mind. Broken up into different parts. Broken up into broken up parts. Into different parts. You want to go to the end of it? There, mm -hmm. I think I saw earlier four out of four or something. Yeah, if that's uh, the conclusions. If I yes. recall correctly, I had a pretty dope conclusion and his mic was off. So he started flipping out and like held up a sign or something like that. <laughs> <clears throat> That's funny. David Wood Ungeon. Let me see. Three, four. What? What is this? Where's the rest of it? Of the masses, give it back to the treasury and let us organize the affairs of the people. Even in the judiciary, we can see the maximum prison sentence in Islam is. Um, but uh, think Anyway, we have to look at this. Just go and watch it. See if you see him holding up a sign, because that would mean those are the conclusions. I can't see it. I don't see him holding up a sign. Anyway, before ruining this live stream further, um, if you if you find it, we should have that, because I would like to see more about a debate between you and the the greatest terrorist. And by the way, by the way. The same thing that I've been pointing out, that all the uh, new Dawah or Islamist or Sharia guys who come along, they have some 
gimmick that gets them popular for a while and then either they get arrested because they support terror behind the scenes or they just fade out because people no. catch, on their, catch on to their methods look on look look at the guys who were popular back then they're gone they're not around anymore it's a new it's a new breed that's uh popular and wait five wait five or six years it's going to be a different group it's going to be a different group of pop because they all do the same thing they all come along they get popular for a little while people figure out their whatever uh whatever their lies are, whatever their tricks are. And then they fall out of favor and they have to look for new guys. But you can look back, the uh, the Christians who are dealing with Islam back then, same Christians who are dealing with Islam now, but you have more. You have, you have, you have new guys as well. It's a new generation. He, he, he. Um, Mumu Joe said, why a group of 1.7 billion people so obsessed and jealous of 12 million people group? If Jews fake Jews say they are the chosen ones, how does it affect Muslims? Chosen Muslims one. are the real better best group on earth. Well, they believe that you need to be killed in the end and they need to subdue you. So why are you not complying? This is the issue that really is at the bottom of all of this. It's you've got uh, and it's more than 1.7 billion. That's an that's an old statistic. It's it's more like around uh, 1.9 or, or 2 billion right now. Insanely jealous of a small group that is winning against them and they can't take it because that's not supposed to happen. It's a massive refutation of their. It's not supposed to happen. It's not supposed to happen in Islam. The Jews aren't supposed to be more powerful than Muslims. The Jews are supposed to be subjugated and marginalized completely by now, and they're not. And so that's why there's this obsession. Well, if the Quran says, if the Quran and Muhammad say that this is what's going to happen and it's not happening, we have to try really, really hard right now to make it happen. We have to try really, really hard to beat these guys because this is not supposed to be happening right now. The plus side is if they try and try and try and it doesn't work, hopefully this uh, the wheels start turning. Wait a minute. We're supposed to have the final prophet, the best religion, the final revelation. Why does why does the best prophet and the true religion and the final revelation make us completely weak, weak and ineffective and we depend on everyone else and we have to run around begging begging other countries for handouts and support to help us all the time? We have the best religion, frankly. <clears throat> um, I was just looking through this. I think I found it. What? Well, <clears throat> Ted. Muhammad told his followers that it's okay to beat their wives into submission. And we know from Sahih Muslim that he beat Aisha. Muhammad told his followers that women are stupid and that their testimony is worth half that of a man. Muhammad tortured people for money. He supported his religion by robbing people. He preached a message of violence and oppression and cruelty. And he taught his followers to believe in a God who loves only them and no one else. Oh, did you see it? He did hang something. Yeah, what is it? Medina, to eliminate in front of him. He beheaded hundreds of Jews for trying to defend themselves once they realized he was trying to eliminate them. Muhammad started a war with Mecca when he had a chance to live in peace. In Medina, he enslaved <laughs> Can't read thousands it. of people. He it says load of rubbish. <laughs> 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 allowed his followers to rape their female captives and yes he took the most beautiful captive back to his own <laughs> <laughs> man what a dummy what a what? dummy b That's wood fun. i was back in my prime david would humiliating the terrorists since 3000 bc he got spanked so hard he went into jail yeah, Mahatid Hashikal Temple Tax Exodus 30, 13 said Ness Ivan. I I agree entirely. I agree completely and fully. Yes, indeed. Uh, Exodus 30, 13 says, Each one who crosses over to those already counted is to give her half shekel according to the sanctuary shekel, which weighs 20 geras. The half shekel is an offering to the Lord. <laughs> Interesting. Um, Miss Peaches says, if suicide is haram, how dying as a jihadi halal? Well, you got to make make the best out of it. You can't just go kill yourself. You have to kill somebody else while killing yourself. Yeah, so there's a concept of collateral damage in Islam. If you launch a terrorist attack and you end up uh, killing some Muslims in the process, well, that's collateral damage. But also, if your goal, let, let's suppose you load yourself up with uh, explosives and go, uh, kill a bunch of people. Your goal is to kill the other people. You're the collateral damage. Your intention is not just to kill yourself. Your intention is to kill the other people. You're just killed in the process. And so 
The BH says Jews as chosen do this 613 mitzvot and teach a Torah. And no, 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 it's not true. According to Muhammad Hijab, you're just chosen and you can do whatever you want. Hmm. That's it. You, you're wrong about this. Uh, five silver pesos says there is only one Hughes, John Hughes. Is that is that the that's the that's the uh, movie writer and director, uh, the Breakfast Club, and a bunch of oh, those yeah. bunch yeah, of those yeah. teen movies back then, Sixteen From Candles the, and 80s, Pretty in so Pink and all 90s, that stuff. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, Ferris okay. Bueller's Day Off, all those. That's funny. That is funny. Uh, Star D says the horror that Jews chose life like God told us to in Deuteronomy 13, 30, 19. Yep, that's the passage yep. I read. Yep, yep. That, that was a very bad choice. According to Muhammad Hijab, you should have chosen you should have chosen death. Yes, they should have said, No, we choose death. Don't tell us to choose life. We choose death. We're chosen. We're chosen, so we choose death. Oh God, you don't understand. I understand better than you. We choose death. That's Muhammad Hijab for you. That's the, <laughs> the most popular. That's, Dawa, of that's Dawa, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Ali Wasserman said Hijabi's looking a bit stressed. I think he needs to cash in his argument, augmented Zabuba outside. That is true. That is true. That is true. He is. They are. Uh, they are. They seem to be coming a bit unhinged, aren't they? All the yeah. Dawa guys across the board, they're becoming more yes. and more unhinged. But why? Because the further south the IDF goes, the more hopeless it is that they're actually going to, like Hamas is actually going to survive and win this. And they're they're in panic mode because they really thought they really thought when they were cheering when they were cheering for a uh, for the attacks and so on, um, lots of people actually thought that uh, they were going to get away with this. Hamas is going to get away with it. And Israel's going to back down, and they might fight for a little while. There might be some retaliation, but they're going to give up because college students and Marxists and people are going to be uh, protesting on college campuses. Yeah. By the way, for those who were following the whole Jake Shields thing, um, so Jake Shields is a is a uh, new Nazi who hates Jews and who has a very big mouth and says the dumbest things on Twitter. Uh, I challenged him to a debate to a debate a long time ago. He said, "You're yeah, sure if you can have a big platform." And then Tim Cast jumped in within minutes and said, "We can host it." Yeah. And then he he was like, "Oh no, it's too far, and I want money." So he kind of backed out and has been stalling ever since. Uh, then somebody here, uh, Larry Me Gregory, said, "Please have Jake Shields and Act 17, which is David Wood here on the mm -hmm. screen, on as guests together." Jake said, "I'm going on with Nick Fajitas next month, so this clown can come along." Yeah, and, and keep clown. in mind, so I didn't challenge him. He said he he invited me. He invited yep. me, and I responded and said, uh, "Be happy to go." Yeah. So and then he, he back, and then he backed down. He goes with Nick Fuinto. And then David said, nice, Jake Shields just invited me to join him and his hero, Nick Fajita, for a discussion next month. I accept. Jake says he only travels if he's being paid. So I wonder how much Nick gave him. But since Jake still hasn't done the debate he agreed to with AP, I'm thinking AP can join us as well. That way Jake and AP can have their debate. And then we can all have a fun discussion about Israel, Jews, and the rise of these new nazi clans set it up jake and but and, i mean think about how reasonable that is right so if you're jake i get it i get it so jake is uh jake is posting all these tweets but at the end of the day he's an mma fighter so he will have the right amount of aggression in a debate but he might not feel comfortable in, in, with his knowledge but he's gonna have his hero nick fuentes with him right this is like the the the, the king of all neo-nazis right now so he's gonna have his i thought that was entirely reasonable he invites yeah. me. I say, fine. But since you're already traveling, since you're already traveling and there's going to be cameras rolling, then I can bring AP. You guys can have the debate that you agreed to do, but you made excuses and your excuses were you weren't going to travel. But now you're already traveling. So that excuse just went bye bye. So you could do that debate with AP. And then the four of us, you'll be there with your hero. And it's me and AP, and we can all have a big discussion. What did he do? And then we can all pee. And then Jake Shields, unfortunately, responded to this saying, okay, you are another liar like that guy, so you are uninvited. <laughs> <laughs> so suddenly, after David brought up this very fair point and said, oh, yeah, okay, let's do it. Let's do it. If Nick Fiesta is going to host it and you invite me, then let's, let's all get together and let's do this. And he was like, no, no, I'm not doing this. You're a liar. You're a hey. liar. Hey, you got my response to that there? Um, I posted then, a tweet. 
then actually let me see um let me see oh yeah then you said jake i agree to debate apostate profit if it's on a big platform tim cast will host jake i changed my mind ap coward jake but i'd be happy to face david wood me okay let's do it jake i changed my mind again <laughs> did jake submit this quickly in mma <laughs> And he said, I'm looking to imagine, go. Th think about this. If this were an MMA fight, this would be like, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, let's do it. No, never mind. I don't want to fight. I don't want to fight. What the heck? <laughs> I'm looking to go and have a reasonable, polite debate with two Zionists. You two are both clowns and a waste of time. I'll get guys. I'll get get guys who are actually famous. He's gonna rich get and guys. famous. I've never heard of either of you other than seeing you both constantly post about me without tagging me. Never heard of me. He's fo He follows me on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> he follows me on Twitter. He's one of my followers. <clears throat> that is that is very, 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 very funny. So the whole thing with Nick Frito didn't work out, uh, um, which is kind of weird. I... Wait, weird how you keep running your mouth about two clowns who are a waste of time. Also weird how you keep saying you're ready to debate us until we accept and you instantly back down. But please tell us which famous imaginary Zionist are you planning to debate? Yeah, because I'm going to debate like who? Who are you going to debate? Like who would he debate and he would actually accept? Which famous Zionist would say, I agree to debate Jake Shields and he would actually accept and not back down like a little coward? Yeah, yeah, and, and I, I basically tweeted at him because he calls me a liar, right? He says, you are a liar like him. And I said, uh, Jake told me repeatedly that he would debate me, but he doesn't want to do it for free. Now he's calling me a liar. Maybe people should know how Jake actually thinks. And I wanted to post the whole back and forth between him and me that we had per messages, but I just posted this little bit here where he says, it is hard for me to want to travel that far unless it's business. I don't make my money through political shit. I just talk shit for fun. <laughs> this is how he describes his online activism for but, Palestine. But think about this. So given what he given what he just said, uh, I only travel if it's for business. And he said to you, he's not traveling without getting paid. But he said he is going to do recordings with Nick Fuentes. So he is getting yeah. paid and that's all set up. His travel's covered. And so what was the problem? That was his excuse for not debating you. Yeah. And so that's all, that's all fixed. And he challenged, I didn't challenge him. He challenged me. So that solved all the issues. He was getting paid. He gets to do his debate with you. He challenged me. We get to have a discussion. His hero, Nick Fuentes is there. Uh, so they've got, you've got the neo-Nazis versus uh, the guys who aren't crazy about neo-Nazis and they back down. So I'm just wondering, where is the lie? <clears throat> Liar. Where in all of this is the lie? Where did I or David lie in any of this? And then he said, uh, he said about me that I begged him for a debate. He said, yeah. <laughs> this loser I never heard of begged me to debate him. <laughs> First off, before I told him to debate me, he kept commenting on my posts, under my posts which I can prove easily. I said, sure, thinking it would be online or he would come to me. Instead, he had asked me to travel eight hours each way to debate him with zero pay. Excuse me, if, if you agree to have a debate with somebody, I expect, okay, you know what? If I'm going to have a debate with someone, it might be in person, it might be online, it might be organized by some you know, big platform that will invite me. I might have to travel. I mean, I, I took into consideration that I will probably have to travel for this. I also have to travel. It's not just him who has to travel. I also have to travel in order to go on TimCast. <laughs> it's not just him. But he's he not said, willing He's not willing to defend the Palestinians if it requires travel. He doesn't want to be, yeah. inconv he doesn't want to be inconvenienced in attacking yeah. Jews. He wants to do it from... He wants to only attack Jews from the convenience of his uh, computer. Then he says, I said no thanks. And now he's made countless videos and constantly says, I'm scared to debate him. Mm -hmm. I made, uh, so the total amount of videos that I made about him uh, is zero. Well, no, he said countless. 
I mentioned him once during a live stream <laughs> after his rejection, after he dropped out. No, you just mentioned him again, so that's two. No, wait. <laughs> and, and, uh, Jake Shields can't count to two, so he's technically correct. <laughs> <laughs> what is he talking about? Countless videos? What? And, well, what's funny is the entire time he's calling you a liar. You're the liar. Yeah. You're the liar. <laughs> So, okay, technically, if you He's want to count that one live stream, that one live stream, it would be one video. Okay, one video. Apparently, one video is count. One is countless to him. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. And I said, I literally asked you once to debate me, and you agreed immediately under the condition that we have a big platform. What's That's begging to you? And we can always do it online. And let me see. I don't, I don't think he replied to that. Yep. Nope. Nowhere to be seen. <laughs> what an... What a weasel. What a weasel. But you can trust whatever he says about <laughs> Jews. Yeah. Because he's entirely trustworthy. Stupid neo-Nazis are really, really disappointing compared to the Nazis, the OG Nazis. The OG Nazis, if they came back and saw the neo-Nazis, they would be like, guys, are you are you people who are stupid? <laughs> Heroes Workshop said, why are Muslims bad about Palestine? What happened to predestination? Allah knows best. Allah willed all of this. Be mad at him. Precisely. Alhamdulillah. And an end says, you should want to die. Is it an ad to recruit terrorists? Useless religion. A religion should regulate or promote societies in a positive way. Otherwise, it is just a cult. It is just a cult. Look up the Ramadan of Peace. Nigerian reacts with Frank Stephen in nine minutes. Hilarious. You love it. I will check it out. Loaves of Bread said, somebody's making notes as we speak. Loaves of Bread said, would you do a live stream about anti-natalism? I wouldn't. Unbelievable. Had a debate where the Christian philosopher agreed it was sound based on reducing pain. I mean, did the Christian philosopher agree that from a non-Christian perspective it was sound? A sound can mean anything. Um, doesn't mean that he has to say doesn't mean that he has to agree with it. He can just say that it is sound based on the idea of producing pain. David, what do you think? Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I'd have to see what's going on there because I have no idea what debate this is referring to. Yeah, yeah. I also don't have a problem with anyone named Natalie. Uh, Jesse said, according to Dr. Bill Warner and the CSPI organization, 17% of the Medinan Quran is anti-Jewish. Mein Kampf, 7% is anti-Jewish. <laughs> Yeah, I, I can also Ron, say that... Uh, Ron is stronger. <laughs> it's... The Hadith are also... I would say that if, if you take the Hadith into consideration, <clears throat> Islamic texts are more explicitly violent about Jews than Mein Kampf actually is. Because I, in Mein Kampf, Hitler doesn't ever uh, specifically talk about killing or exterminating them he does say that uh that there will be a eventually a permanent solution to get rid of the grip of the jews or some nonsense like that which seems to imply a removal of jews but the quran is but the, but islam is much more explicit so yeah islam is worse that's it says there is billboard in england calling for sterilization all with white kids on it i have to see that i will see it when i believe it as jews chosen as a contract you cannot avoid you must do the commandments and teach and learn torah tiflin davening three times a day kosher nope i don't believe you because muhammad hijab said you don't have to do anything he said you are chosen by birth and you don't have to do anything. So why would I believe you instead of believing what Muhammad Hijab said? He's louder. So pretty sure I made a compelling argument here. Hey. What? Hey, it's very short. I just wanna I just want if any if any of the uh, Jewish viewers can tell if this kid is actually pull up how to Davin. It's short, it's only a few seconds long. I don't know if this kid is Jewish and he's just, he's goofing around because he's got, looks like he's got a tour. He's a little kid. <laughs> but Where? It's it's how to dove it and it's got a little kid in it. It should be like uh, one of the top, one of the top videos. There's on the YouTube. Top. Yeah. YouTube. Just look how to dove in. How to Daven. It's Daven. 
How to Daven. Okay. It is cool that my name is in Daven, Dave. How to Daven. Let's see. Look at this kid. It's 35 seconds. But I can't tell if he's oh, making yo, fun. Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> I can't tell if this is a non-Jewish kid making fun of Jews or if it's if he's just like <laughs> saying this is saying that. I can't pretty tell. Sure, huh? Pretty sure this is a Jewish kid. <laughs> looking at the looking at the looking Look at, at the, the name the kid's hilarious man yeah he also has a um he also has a flag uh of the star of david in his uh room on a different video that's funny that's funny oh yeah 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 no yeah yeah i'm looking he's he's older and he's got the uh he's got the uh braids yeah. and stuff like that so yeah, yeah. So this is just him sort of yeah. joking joking about the uh he's this is what we do yeah <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Pantsman said you're a blessing, AP. No, I'm not. I'm so glad you guys are here. Thank you. Appreciate it. Th appreciate it. Thank you, Pantsmans. I also appreciate you, Pantsmans. Thank you so much. Pantsmans, you're a blessing, not me. Thank you. Um, Ryan Kim, I searched for action for humanity ads with Farfour, but instead found a video game called Nightmare Below Disney that uses Farfour as its final boss. <laughs> what? I hope this is just a joke, but I will have to look that up. Uh, we, we still have to make five nights at Farfours. <clears throat> that would be fantastic. Uh, BH said, yes, just different roles. Yeah, that, that's basically the understanding of, of uh, people in Judaism where th th there was a video by, what's the guy's name? Gil Schuster, who goes and asks Jews and Palestinians questions. And he asks him about, uh, do you think that you're, do you think you are superior to, to non-Jews or do you think you are special? And then uh, lots of them explain actually, or try to explain, no, it's not like that. What it actually is, is that uh, we just believe that we have a distinct role compared to the non-Jews who have a different role. But people don't seem to understand it. The comment section of people who uh, who read this are like, no, they're trying to say they're special. <laughs> they're trying to say they're better than everyone else. No, it's not what they say. It's hard for people to understand. Hard to understand. Jack said, AP, David Wood, keep destroying the idiocy of Islam with the truths of life. AP, get better soon. Standing with Israel from South Africa. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Shame that your country has taken such a terrible stance on the issue. Um, yes, but thank you. And I'm glad that you wish for me to get better and not for David, who is also seemingly mm -hmm. sick. Yep. Yeah. Uh, appreciate it. XXWLZX said, isn't having a hedonistic afterlife where all you do is have sex, eat and drink just another form of nihilism? What's the ultimate purpose of that? I made a video on this a long time ago, which was, that was precisely the point. Um, Muslims repeatedly say, oh, your life has no meaning. You can't you just do whatever you just eat, drink and then die. <laughs> what is this? Well, um, in the, from a Muslim perspective, that is all you do in the afterlife. That means ultimately you're going to have a permanently meaningless life where all you do is just enjoy um, all the primitive things. It's very, very weird, isn't it? Colton Connor says, Jews and Muslims, des a devil. What? Lonnie Crow said, I know many Jews who in fact believe in Ezra. It's one of the best falafels. Uh, half a kilometer from J from Jabotinsky Street. That's funny. Ezra. Uh, BH, us, US abandons the Holy Land. Being Christian is bad. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Muhammad doesn't even cover his head. That's true, too. Yeah. EMS said propaganda channel Quran and Islam has video claiming Jews are building the garden of Kargat trees. A dog whistle called to murder Jews. Check it out. Uh, yeah, uh, that, that's what Muslims generally do. Uh, Muhammad Hijab also did the same thing, by the way. Muhammad Hijab once made a uh, tweet response to Benjamin Netanyahu where he said, uh, why, are you build why are you planting Kargat trees or something like that? He is, he is one of them. These people actually want to push this stupid, ridiculous 
a dumb idea that Jews are planting Kargat trees because they are aware that they will be killed by the Muslims and they will lose in the end. How delusional can you be, man? The Jews don't even know what a Kargat tree is. Yeah, now, and by the way, think about how dumb this would be, right? So yes. you, as a Muslim, you understand that all trees will snitch on the Jews except for the Garkid tree. So if you see a Garkid tree, you just wouldn't believe what it says, right? Yeah. And then you'd go and look behind it. Yeah. And so you think Jews are actually building Garkid trees because they think, ooh, this will be a good place to hide. This is the tree that won't snitch on us, according to Muhammad. <laughs> So when we believe that Muhammad's a true prophet, so we're going to plant these trees because they won't snitch on us, even though since Muhammad told them that the Garka tree wouldn't snitch, they'll know to just check behind the Garka tree. That's the thing. They think Jews are as stupid as they are. That's the problem. Yep. That is the entirety of the problem here. This is the core of the conflict. <laughs> um... <laughs> WLZ says, why do Muslims act like all atheists are de facto nihilists? Nihilism is a position you have to choose to believe in no such thing as automatic nihilist. <clears throat> atheists of all kinds of different philosophy. This is one thing that I did that I tried to explain to Muhammad Hijab when he he when he actually made those tweets about uh me committing suicide, where he told me to commit suicide because I'm an atheist nihilist. I tried to explain to him uh that this is this means nothing. It is just an accusation in the history uh, of, of philosophy, in the history of the use of the word nihilist. It is mostly an accusation made against others who say that they are nihilists. People who are atheists are not by default nihilists. That's not how it works. That's not how it ever worked. But Muhammad Hijab seems to think that's how it works. Or he seems to be applying that same concept of just uh, accusing the other side of being a nihilist, which is very, very funny. Do you agree with what I said, David? Absolutely. Alhamdulillah. Although I have to say, when I was an atheist, I was a nihilist. See, David was indeed crazy. Aaron Michael says, Aaron Michael Abdel Masih ibn Antakya says, uh, thank you, Dr. Wood, for the good that you do in sharing the Holy Gospel to the Mohammedans. I found you around 2007 via YouTube with your hilarious ABC special, 72 Raisins, Raisins, Philippians 1-3. What's that about, David? That was that was uh, that was after 2007. That might have been like around 2010 or something like that. But yeah, ABC had this big special on us, like an hour long 2020 special on islam and everything in there they're getting like the they got uh urshad manji on there to say and the quran it actually says 72 raisins not virgins and one that doesn't even come from the quran right uh the 72 that comes from the hadith um but the idea that this would be translated as raisins i went through all of the quran verses which promises the maidens or huris in paradise and i just put the word raisins in there and it's like and the raisins with swelling breasts and stuff like that and then anyway it didn't work out very well but i kept saying raisins and uh <clears throat> so and i think at the end i was just chewing on raisins i said why don't they just go to the grocery store <laughs> like you're going to paradise to get 72 raisins. Oh, I want those raisins. Yeah, 72. Count them up for me, Allah. Mm, that was good. Now what? My 72 goodness. space raisins. That was, the, that was the same famous one where by the end, they're saying that at, real Muslims are our first line of defense against terrorism. Right. And they point they pointed the camera at three random Muslims in New York. <laughs> One of them was Sadiq Abdul Malik, who was with Revolution Muslim. Right? <laughs> they, 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 a bunch of those guys, Sadiq did, but a bunch of those guys got arrested. For They were the ones who uh, threatened wow. the South Park creators. They were the ones who threatened the South Park creators, and they got locked up for it. He was with them. I was like, you can't point a camera at three random Muslims and not get one who's, who supports terrorism? That's fun. That's funny. Yeah, that was, it was insane that they were that stupid. It was a funny, funny, funny. series. Anyway, in the end, we all like raisins with uh, perky breasts. Nick76 said, did you see that Action for Humanity are using Farfur the Mouse to advertise the charity on YouTube? What Action for Humanity? What is Action for Humanity using with Farfur? What is going on there? I didn't know. I have to check it out. 
I would have to look, have to have a wee look at it and see what's going on right there. Um, David is looking at it right now as we speak because that's what he likes to do. Ari Wasserman said, but the Jews corrupted the scripture. They were commanded to choose death, they, but they choose life because they're <laughs> cowards, unlike us who want to die. <laughs> that's that's basically something Muhammad Hijab would actually say, it looks like. Mulsak TV said, but the Bible says that we are all children of God. You see, it's true. Yeah, but the, the Quran says that you are not children of God. Quran says, don't say that. BH says, for someone who believes in God, why does he wear a Palestine shirt, a place named by idol worshippers? Uh, that's a question. The funny thing is that the historical aspect of it is basically, it's it's really as pathetic as um, the, the, the Palestinians today adopted their name, adopted the name of their Palestinian nation from Europeans, you know, from British people. They adopted their flag from British people. <laughs> it was uh, the, the, the Palestinian flag that they have today was designed based on the flag of the Arab revolt, which was designed by a British guy. Yes, it was designed by a British guy. The, the name is British. The land, the borders were drawn by the British. The flag was designed by a British guy. And then they come and are like, oh, this is, we are the indigenous people. And you Jews, you Zionists, you are invaders, you are colonialists. <clears throat> it's quite funny. Isn't it interesting, by the way, like, like a couple decades can go by and they think they can completely rewrite history. Yes. And then it's like, they're proven correct with large parts of the world's population that the large parts of the world's population will instantly go along with the completely rewritten history. They did the exact same thing with the Quran. So the Quran, the Quran that Muslims said was the only Quran was a hundred years old is, is basically a hundred years old this year. It was, it came out in 1924. Think about that. You have the entire history that anyone can look up, anyone could research and find this out. And then they come out with a, a standardized version in 1924 couple decades goes by and they say, you see only one Quran perfectly preserved from the time of Muhammad. And it's like, you, you guys just, you, 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 you think you could just say it and sweep all of history under the rug for your agenda. And they get away yeah. with it. <clears throat> they can. Until now. They can do it, but uh, just wondering if it works, but apparently it does work. But this, like this, stupid. this objection on the screen is kind of silly. A uh, place named by idol worshippers. I mean, who... I mean, who spreads more idolatry than, than Muslims? No, I, I'm, yeah. I'm, dead, I'm, I'm absolutely serious. Show me anyone who has spread idolatry more than Islam. <laughs> That's a big accusation here. That's a big accusation. Very, very big accusation. Mm -hmm. um, so here is one of the displays. So Mark Sykes, uh, who was a, what was he? Was what's it called? I don't know what it, whatever it's called. Mark Sykes, who was there uh, to inspire a sense of um, of togetherness, of unity among Arabs against the um, against the Ottoman Empire. Um, he is the one who designed the the flag, as you have it, the flag of the Arab Revolt. Um, which was a very revolting flag. And that flag, from that flag, uh, was the Palestinian flag today inspired. In fact, much of the um, flags in the Arab world are based on this. Um, there was a thing of that, a graph of that. Let me see. Uh, flags based on the Arab revolt. Let's see which countries are there. There was a there was an image here. There was an image here right here somewhere. Let me bring this up. Let me bring this up right here. All right. Let's see. Oh, there's a Reddit here. Okay, that's funny. But uh, at least it provides some information. Here you have it. This is the original that is designed by uh, Mark Sykes, by the British diplomat. And then based on this design, 
multiple Arab countries take the the idea and and create their own flags, including Jordan, whose flag looks almost the same as the Palestine flag, which came later, except that it doesn't have that star on it. It's all a British idea. It's quite funny. But then they're well, like, oh, no, we are we are indigenous. We are Arab. We did. We are not even. No, we are not even Arab, actually. We are very, very indigenous. And we did well, all this by ourselves. I mean, come on. Islam, Islam copies everything from someone else. So why would you criticize them for that? Well, yeah, that's that's true. That's actually the power and the beauty of Islam. Uh, what is wrong with immigration policy? Most countries have a criterion for good personality. Muzi Orons, like hijab, meet a criterion while they are actively promoting terrorism. Deport them. I would say if somebody says that they are looking forward to an Islamic state, they should be deported without question. That's what I would say. But yeah, the Western people have become weaklings. They're weaklings. They're finished already. You're finished already. Look at me. Look at me. You know you're done. Uh, but you see, NNN made a super chat and said Criterion. You know what else is called Criterion? The Quran. <laughs> you see. You see, this is a miracle. It's the Criterion, not a Criterion. <laughs> Uh, EMS said propaganda channel. I saw this already. White Lily says dummy shields running away from a debate after David Wood accepts his invite was an amazing thing to wit to witness. It was indeed. Th there were even some of his own uh, herd of the new Nazis saying, uh, "Jake, this is kind of pathetic." <laughs> that was because fun. it is. Yes, keep. I don't think everyone has some obligation to debate so if you challenge someone to debate and they say no i don't i don't want to debate i'm not a debater or something like that if you, if you were if he had been like what are you talking about guys i'm an, I'm an mma fighter when when you uh when you mentioned debating to him if he was like i'm a dude i'm an mma fighter i'm not uh, i'm not a debater i'd be like he's he's totally correct um but he didn't he said yes i'll debate if you get a if you get a big platform big platform was there in a couple minutes and no no okay i don't want to do it and then with me, he actually calls me out. He calls me out. Hey, you, you come face me. Okay. No, I don't want to. Like, you're the one who keeps agreeing to things and then backing down. You didn't have to agree to them at all at any point. Yeah. If somebody tells you, if, if you are in his, in his position and somebody comes and says, hey, uh, how about you debate me since you talk about these things publicly? Somebody like Jake Shields can say, no, I'm not a debater. I don't know much. I got beat in the head a lot. Mm. I am kind of slow, and I don't think I'm. I don't think I can debate these things. Yeah. So I just and, want to sit here all day, all night, throwing tantrums about Jews on Twitter. Yeah. If you don't like it, you can respond to my tweets. That's yeah. it. That's all he had to say. But he can't. He keeps acting like he's ready and then doesn't. And he can say. He can say. I personally do not endorse and use this word for myself. But others would go on to claim that I am retarded which is why it is not suitable for me to engage in a debate. I mean, just you, if you can, if you say that it's okay, it's acceptable, but why do you challenge people to debates and accept debates and then back out? It's a shame. Oh, I'm trying to hide. Here. Okay. All right. Let's see. Oh, this is good. This is good. Look at this. this is good. Mess with your settings. <laughs> This looks like Japanese. Uh, Kepa Pallet said, Hakikachu said, Israel stops the formation of the caliphate in a YouTube video on Muslim Sheptic. What? Hakikachu said, Israel stops the formation of the caliphate in a YouTube video on Muslim Sheptic. That would be a fun video to watch. I mean, is, is that a praise of Israel? Or... <laughs> it might be a clip we want to save because that'd actually be funny. You see, we want yes. the caliphate and Allah wants us to have our caliphate, but the Jews are too strong. They're stronger than Allah. Go juice, go. Go juice, go juice, go juice. Jindu, why are you making a comment every seven seconds since slow mode is for seven seconds saying apostate prophet bit British what? Muslims? What? British non Muslims. British English people. British English men. He's still posting every two seconds. Why are you posting this? What's happening here? Yeah. You want me to block him? No. I like blocking people. Mark Schwarzberg made a super chat. Thank you so much, Mark Schwarzberg. 
Alejandro Sudiro said, have you guys done a commentary on Hijab's interview with Jordan Peterson in the mosque? He was so belligerated that he didn't post a full video. I wanted to do that back then. It's been quite a while, isn't it? Hasn't it? it that, that was the video where he uh, basically, after the conversation, said to Jordan Peterson, so, 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 and, and what do you think? And Jordan Peterson is like, oh, well, what do you mean? And the guy who is Jordan Peterson's friend said, he's asking you if you're, if you're ready to convert to Islam. <laughs> that, I've that never was a funny conversation. I didn't, I didn't watch that. I don't remember. All I remember is like a clip. I don't think I watched it. I can't recall anything. The only thing I recall is a clip where, uh, with the, uh, uh, yes, you could see the rapid early spread of Islam. We conquered so many people that it must have been divine. It must have been divine. And Jordan Peterson goes, so why didn't it work when you got to Europe? And Hijab just goes, well, it didn't work there. Yeah, it's like, wait, just, what? <laughs> it just, it, 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 it got stopped. It just, it, it didn't work. The, the follow-up, the follow-up <laughs> should have been, so was their religion, they're stronger than yours or? <clears throat> yeah. Why, why was that not part of Allah's plan? Of Allah's plan? I don't know. I don't buy your Ella. Uh, Danny says calling someone a slur, apostate prophet, disappointing. Something that I would expect from little from the little Christ. Uh, so is, this is very. This is a very interesting comment that uh, you you are disappointed in me because I allegedly used a slur against somebody, which I didn't. I said. I spoke from his perspective and said that other people might call him so, but he personally would not use that word. So I didn't. Okay, to be honest, yeah, okay, definitely, yeah, I, I did use it, uh, <laughs> to be very honest. But then why would you make this comment and then basically go on and call other people, refer to other people in a derogatory manner? Isn't this a little bit ironic? Mm -hmm. Danny yeah. Gorner. Shameful, Danny. Oh, Danny boy, AP, AP is exposing you. Danny, why are you disappointed that I'm calling people a slur, but then you are referring to another group in a derogatory manner? Danny, what is this? Okay, let's say, you know what? You're right. You're correct. I shouldn't be using a slur. It's not good. Okay. And I actually feel bad about it. And you're right on that. But then why are you doing this? Yes, we will see each other in court. Big Rig said, because Moore was into suicide, kept having to be talked down. That's true. He was wanting to jump, but he was uh, but people, but they were like, no, don't. The red cow said, no, that Ali and Dawkins are Christians. AP is the last bastion of new atheism. What went wrong? <laughs> You mean Ayan Hirsi Ali? Yeah, mm -hmm, it's kind of mm -hmm. funny to refer to her as Ali, because when you say Ali, I think of Ali G, um, or Caliph Ali, or Ali Dawa. Yeah, uh, right. The red cow said, "Not at Ali Dawkins." I already read this. What's wrong with you? Ralph said, "Good evening." No, Ralph26 said, good evening, fellows and all. Thank you for this question. How do we bring up these issues with Islam with Muslims? Thank you. God bless you all. My personal opinion is, uh, if you're talking about Muslims online, you are already having the conversation. If you are having it, you can bring it up. My personal opinion has always been quite consistent. I don't go to Muslims and talk to them about this. I don't... Um, see Muslims and say to them, eh, your religion is bad, your religion is wrong. I personally don't do it. I just speak in my own sphere, and if they're trying to spread it or trying to propagate it, uh, then I go and interfere. However, somebody who is not uh, in my shoes with a different perspective and a different agenda, like David Wood, might have a different approach to it. So David, what do you say? Uh, you, it's usually pretty easy. Uh, lots of Muslims would love to talk about these things. So just open the door and ask them a question. It's pretty easy. Hey, what do you or think about what do you in. what do you think about such and such? There it goes. Yeah, or kick the door in. 
WLZ said, do you think some of these Dawa boys are secretly atheists? Mm -hmm. Yes. Didn't Yasser Qadi in an email several years ago express that he had serious doubts? He did express that he had serious doubts about certain things during his um studies. when he went when he went to college. When he went to yeah. college, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think that's that's what that was. And that was because that was because his dad, as we've pointed out, was one of the guys who propagated the myth of the Quran's perfect, miraculous preservation. And Yasser Qadi went to school and found out that, uh, huh, a lot of stuff I've heard is complete nonsense. And then he works on issues for years. And in public, he's still saying perfect preservation. But behind the scenes, he's saying, of course, there are all these differences. And I don't think we can actually make sense of these using the methods that we use because we just we listen to any response anyone who says oh because it's it's the it's the seven ah roof and we go oh okay that solves the problem and he says no it doesn't solve the it doesn't solve the problem and then of course the behind the scenes stuff gets brought out into the public with the muhammad hijab interview and together they destroyed the myth of perfect preservation alhamdulillah mm -hmm. The next Dr. Zakir Naik said, be more sensitive, AP. I know I forgot mm -hmm. to put on my sensitivity uh, today mm -hmm. when I went when I went live. Shameful. Uh, that is disgusting, and I regret it. And I want to now follow the advice given by Mohammed Hijab <laughs> since uh, this gives, gives me more suffering, more pain than pleasure. Um, yeah. Whoa. But the wizard said, uh, Apostle Prophet, what's your least favorite part about Islam? So there is one issue that I have with Islam after everything is said and done, after everything that we talked about and went through, to be honest. So um, as you know, there is a description of the women in the afterlife when you go to heaven, when you go to paradise. Allah creates or designs specific uh, virgins divine virgins for the believers that they can plow for all eternity who are just for them i don't like the description uh it's it says that their skin is so fair or so white that it's well it's so transparent that you can see their 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 marrow uh through their skin and i think that is kind of disgusting why is it like that and why can't it be more inclusive toward people who like to have uh you know different kinds of women in the afterlife as reward for the believers this is personally my one issue that i have with Islam. uh david what do you think he didn't ask me he asked you okay with, uh, me, it'd be a, with me it'd be the uh probably if you're just talking about practical consequences it would be the uh it would be terrorism and uh banging little kids and probably be neck and neck if you're talking about bigger scenario, it's a, it's an obstacle to keeping people from actually knowing the true God by giving them a false prophet. Yeah, these are minor issues compared to mine, mm. though. So, mm. Meredith Grody said, "Think that L. Ron Hubbard should be in the running for, to most obviously, a false prophet. A former sci-fi writer seems like he would have an advantage. I don't really. I've never really looked into the history of how that guy created the cult." <laughs> But uh, it seems kind of odd, doesn't it? Have to, do you know anything about this, David? Do you know anything about the story of... I mean, it's pretty wild stuff. It's pretty wild stuff with the aliens and... Uh, yeah, and then the spirits of those aliens and so on. And anyway, it's weird stuff. How does it go from... I mean, did, did he ever claim to have communicated to these higher beings... We're talking about Scientology. We, these you, higher beings that are that are extraterrestrials that are have a, I don't know. You'd have what to, yeah, you'd have to get someone on here who studies Scientology. That's so weird. <laughs> hey, you know it's funny because <laughs> these guys what? these guys believe they have like powers. If they surround people, they can like will people into doing stuff. And uh, it was before I think it was before Mission Impossible Three. When they went up to the producer or the director, and it was like a group of like a dozen or so Scientologists who, because Tom Cruise is a Scientologist, and it was like a dozen of them. And they kind of surrounded the guy, <laughs> they kind of surrounded the producer or whatever, and said, uh, they start going, You're going to give him a bigger percentage. You're going to give him a bigger percentage. He goes, Or what? You guys going to weird me to death? And he walked away. <laughs> that was funny. That's, you guys going to weird. Funny. 
you guys gonna weird me to death <laughs> that's funny that is good they have a nice temple though aren't they? with all the money they take from the rich people russell westbrook gaming david would allah praise on the prophet mimi hijab Act praise on the prophet mimi hijab actually allah praise for not to the prophet that's a meme that needs to come back that needs to come back heroes workshop says ezra shows up juice pass red cow shows up juice i choose i choose i choose the red cow <laughs> Ari was someone happy birthday. I started following Dizzle when he was only 41. Way Ooh. back in the day. Whoa. How old are you? 65. Or, what, 48, 68. 48 big ones tomorrow. Oh, okay. you're younger than I thought. Uh Saul Willis said, Happy birthday, David. Hope you both enjoy the eclipse. It's cloudy where you are. Just drive to Philadelphia. <laughs> I heard it's always sunny there. <laughs> That's funny. That's a joke that I would have made. Yeah. Uh so <laughs> But it doesn't work. The eclipse isn't going through Philadelphia. So your advice is, uh, your beloved. That's true. That's true. That's true. Grand Lord Kaching said, Kaching said, "Wait, I just googled it. Mike Winger was born on Christmas Eve. He is the chosen one. Chosen. Chosen. Not joking. You can look this up. LOL. If this is true, then I don't know. Then I don't know anymore." Spoken with poetry said David would recommend any books to help me be more equipped to make a case for Christianity in response to Islam. I want to grow in confidence and competency. Uh, yeah, you should start with Seeking Allah, Finding Jesus by Nabil, then read Answering Islam by Norm Geisler and Abdul Salib. Um, after I mean, there, there are more books, there are more books that are relevant. Uh, as far as Jihad, The History of Jihad by Robert Spencer. And after that, I would go to the just the website, answeringislam.net. You can find answers to any of the specifics. We're at we're at the end of the live stream now. AP decides to mess with his camera. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. So yeah, and I mean, really, really, I mean, those are those are good books that I recommended. Um, so read those, but answering Islam has responses to really everything and so yeah get a general idea of things and then after you got a general general idea of things pick some things that you're really interested in and become an expert on something general always reminds me of uh my favorite chinese dish which is general those mm -hmm. yeah so yeah i would recommend general those chicken instead of just recommending a book um yeah so the picture quality of this lens is is worse but at least it doesn't least go you're in blurry focus for now if this goes blurry on its own too then it does mean indeed that my camera is kind of messed up so we'll have to check that out i can make myself darker to compensate look look the see? focus is nice. you see you see, now we're the same. You see? How about that? Okay. Um, yes. Viati Vistu said, Syria, Lebanon, be like, no, Israel, give me back my French colonial borders back now. <laughs> um... And then said, hey, Fijab is not stupid. His primary motivation is money and fame, not religion. I think he has a very big ego problem. Fame. Fame. I would, he's, I, a, I he's, a, he's, he's a... He's more a, about fame than money. Hijab is a total narcissist. If he were to go and sit down and take some tests and answer questions honestly, he would be diagnosed with narcissistic personality disorder. That's what I think as well. Perfect case uh, case study for narcissistic personality disorder, in my opinion. Uh, Keegan Smith said, AP, do you know Arabic? La, la, la. Uh, no, I don't. Uh, I don't know what Arabic is. I thought you were about to say, la ilaha illallah. <laughs> No, la, la, la. Uh, I don't. I don't speak Arabic. No, I can read Arabic. 
but it's not the same as speaking Arabic. Hey, what if what if what if we had a what if we had the ex-Muslim Shahada? La 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 Allah. How would that work? <laughs> huh? That'd be good. That'd be good. That'd be good. I yes yes. Tara and Taj said, those who know me as unborn and beginningless and as the supreme lord of the universe, they are among mortals, are free from illusion and released from all evils. BG 10v3, similar to Revelation 22.13. Why? And why? That is the Veda uh, something... Bhagavad Gita 10, 1, chapter 10. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll see. I'll see. Interesting stuff. I read that a long time ago. By a long time ago, I mean just a few years ago. Deedle Fake said, good comeback for everyone who has had problems with the Jews for 2,000 years, so clearly it's their fault. Um, David, go ahead if you want to say something in response to this. <clears throat> everyone has had problems with the Jews for 2,000 years, so clearly it's their fault. Um, it just doesn't, it doesn't work like that. I mean, we, AP, we went over it. We had, uh, we had, we had nothing but good times with Jews. So who has a problem with Jews? You'd have to look. And I would say, look at the, look at the groups and the different times when people have problems with Jews. I mean, think about this because you're including like Hitler there. I mean, look, Hitler had a problem with Jews. So clearly it's the Jews fault. Um, yeah, I would say, I would say when you have a group, when you have a group that doesn't integrate with society, especially a, a group like Jews, where they veered away from certain trades and practices, and they weren't allowed to participate in certain trades and practices. And so the things that they were allowed to, uh, to engage in, they became the best at it because it was what they were allowed to do. And they became extremely successful and many of them wealthy at doing this. And you've got this group over here that isn't integrating, that has their sort of, uh, th that has different from different beliefs from the rest of the population and that is becoming wealthy at it. Who are you going to blame when anything, when you want an enemy? Who are you going to blame? Yeah. But let me just ask a simple question, um, which is, can you name any group that is uh, as significant as Jews, and that lives as a minority, as a religious minority, among uh, in in Europe, among the Christian world, can you name any religious group that lives as a significant minority among Muslims in the Muslim world? You usually can't. It's it doesn't really exist. You have the Jews, who refused to let go who refused to assimilate who held on to their identity their own beliefs um who did not mix who did not uh become part of you because this is what societies generally wanted throughout history they didn't want a a people among them who are different and who hold on to their own values and own beliefs and own identity and own standards and own culture they wanted them to simply integrate they wanted them to assimilate assimilation was a big factor assimilating means oh, okay you are good if you let go and you become part of us and learn our shared values jews didn't really abide by that <laughs> they didn't abide by that they stuck to their own way. I know some people say Christians when you talk about minorities in Muslim culture, but that doesn't really count because Christians, uh, as a culture, are not a minority that is that is that is um, that is unique and um, <clears throat> detached from uh, any force outside. They are an extension of other Christians who are the majority somewhere else in the world. And yeah, Christians uh, are not treated very very well in the Muslim world. However, Christians also have a, have a large connection to Christians outside the Muslim world. Uh, that's different. Jews are their own entity, their own group, and they are very much the only group that strongly exists without uh, assimilating, without disappearing, which is why they get all the hate. This is actually 
this could be seen as something admirable. This could be seen as uh, as as something almost uh, I don't know divinely ordained. This is the thing when when we were in Israel and when we left Israel, I said to David on the plane, um, "All of this feels a little bit weird." As an atheist, I almost feel like I almost feel like there is something going on. There is something uh, otherworldly, something divine going on. Because the the way that these people are, the way we we experienced Israel and the way I experienced Jews, I it does not make sense to me that people would malign them and hate them for the way they are. It must be something else. So maybe there is, after all, a force out there which makes people hate them and um that is that is not very much based on logic but you could also say that it is simply an assimilation thing but yeah so you you can't point at something that jews are actually doing throughout history that makes people hate them there is no such thing all, all you all you come up with in the end is blood libel that existed throughout history where people made up things in order to vilify jews and as as mentioned earlier people didn't just do that with jews they did it with other groups including with groups uh for example in christian europe with certain groups that fell out of favor like the like the crusaders like the um the knights templar and so on just because people hate them that doesn't mean that they are the bad ones on the contrary it could mean that they are actually the good ones it could mean that they are good which is why people envy them and hate them and as far as uh it's kind of a situation where anytime a group is a minority that doesn't go along with the majority as you know you 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 talked about christians there for a second and christians are in a different situation but christians have christians have been like that in specific countries but guess what where christians are the minority in certain countries people have a problem with them right yeah. christians have a problem oh well, why do christians have a problem in egypt and then christians have a and you could go back in time Hey, wait a minute. In the first century, Jews had a problem with Christians when Christians are the minority. And the Romans had a problem with Christians when Christians were the minority. And then countries today have a problem with Christians when Christians are the minority. But the issue is like Christians and Muslims have places where they're not the minority. And that sort of uh, adjusts our attention. The Jews are always the minority up, up until up until they got Israel back from, you know, from the second century down to the present. They're always a, a small minority of of some other country that they're in. And so, I don't know, it's, it is just a, it is just an ongoing pattern. But yeah, if, if someone wants to say they're always the problem, show us what they're doing that makes them all the problem. That's a legitimate criticism that here is, here is legitimately why you deserve to be hated. But when we ask those kinds of questions, we get like 90% of things that are made up. And so, <clears throat> There was a guy, um, a, a thinker and author in the early uh, 1900s, I believe, who wrote a book where he was where he is addressing the non-Jews, the Gentiles, and uh, he expresses from a perspective that most Jews would not agree with. He expresses how uh, he says, "You dislike us because we are not like you. You seem to engage in." Uh, all the vain things in the world, whereas we seem to value um, life for something greater than just, you know, enjoying the moment or whatever it is. And uh, our way always seems to conflict with your ways. And the result of it is that you end up hating us and thinking that we need to be removed. Um, what's funny is neo-Nazis nowadays will even cite that book out of context and will say that that book admits that Jews um, are the problem because they are different and they, don't, and they don't want to assimilate, they don't want to adapt. But no, so the problem is that Jews as a people simply don't assimilate and that is their strength, that is something to be proud of. Jack says, get better soon, David Wood, Christian. Christian still sounds fine when sick. Hey, hey, that's true. Good that's point. True. I don't know who Christian is, but yes, that's true. Uh, Zionist American Hindu said, Pakistani rationalist Atbul Kalib Kamal angry on Harris Sultan because he streamed with you, David. They were friends once. He also mocks and criticizes you, AP. I don't care. I don't even know who that is. Uh, Haters gonna hate. 
The bait is gonna bait. Haters it. gonna hate. Lovers gonna love. I don't even want none of the above. Yeah. Uh David, you have been looking around like you have to go or something. Do you have to go? I kind of I still need to pack because I'm leaving in the morning. Beast. Okay, uh, I have like 10 super chats left. BH said Palestina was named by the Greeks mocking Jesus. Idol worship is near before the mandate. Uh no, that was the, that was the Romans. That was more with the Jews, right? To, to yeah, uh, take basically taking away the national identity of the Jews, and that was after the. Uh, I mean, it had been there were instances of it being called that. It usually applied to the region of the Philistines, um, and then the the Romans then just named the area Palestine as it, when that's when they're that's when they're completely stripping stripping Jews off the land and so on to stop any future rebellions. Plus the, the, the Romans were calling the region, though. so in, in, in the Roman Empire, the region was called the province of Judea. Um, but then after the Bar Kokhba re revolt, they changed it into uh, the province of uh, Syria, Palestina. Uh, but that is also based on um, based. the Greek, <laughs> the Greek <laughs> usage. Um, where uh, Herodotus, among other Greeks, called a region, which is what is Gaza and the coast, a small small coast. They called that region Philistia before, based on these people who were seafaring, mm -hmm. people who apparently landed there. Yes. That's it. Uh, but the, the entire region was not known as, as, um, as Palestina or Philistia. It's just that when the Romans... <clears throat> changed the place's name into syria palestina they did something um that we still feel today they made a move whose consequences we are still feeling today that is bad kd says what do you think the solution is to the cancer spreading of misinformation propaganda and rewriting of history hints of german citizens after world war ii i would say there is nothing you can really do about it I would say you got to be relentless. See, this is the rough part, right? You would have think that in the in the internet age where people have the ability to look things up really, really rapidly, and you can't just get away with saying something that can't instantly be fact-checked by other people, you'd think that this is going to get better, but it just makes it, it just seems to make it very, very easy to spread complete nonsense and spread it very rapidly. So... People just, we, you just have to be relentless and it's going to be a mess. Alhamdulillah. And then said everyone has a problem with the Muzi, so clearly it is their fault. They're not even a minority, LOL. Yeah, the, the, the logic also doesn't hold up because uh, Muslims themselves say, the Quran himself, the Quran itself says, uh, if you listen to most people, they will go astray because most people, they don't want you to follow the truth and so on. It's basically responding to how the polytheists are uh, allegedly persecuting the Muslims back in the day. Um, then but coming out and that. saying the Jews are being hated, therefore it's their fault. It just makes but no think, about, think about the difference there. When you say, oh, but people always have a problem with, people always have a problem with Jews, so it must be their fault. It must be their fault. And you say, okay, well, maybe there are some things that make people target Jews. Is it really their fault when people hate them and want to, uh, want to wipe them out and things like that? Uh, there we need to see what they're doing that makes them worthy of that level of hostility. And when we look, we find typically a bunch of things that are made up about them as propaganda. When you say, hey, but lots of people have a problem with Muslims over the centuries, so why would that be? What were, they, what were they doing? What were they doing? I can point to things that they were doing. You can point to things that they were doing, namely declaring war on, on everyone around them. And that, that's why people had a problem with Islam. <laughs> Script call we just gifted two memberships. Thank you very, very much for expanding the cult. We haven't seen many membership gift things today. Uh, the memberships need to grow so that we, our cult can expand and I can finally have the means to move this cult to a compound down in South America uh, where we will then live as a restricted community. Um, Thug E said, it is interesting how Arab flags have the colors, colors of the horsemen of the apocalypse in the book of Revelation. That is a funny thing to bring up in there. 
Nick76 said in the far full video, give this place Syrians a home on action for humanity's YouTube page. Okay, yeah, I couldn't find it, but there were like a million videos, so I didn't know which one it was. So give this place Syrians a home on action for humanity's YouTube page. So you might want to look at it. Let me see what it says right there in it. Um person with a Hebrew name says, Thank you both for all you do. Love AP. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Since you converted yesterday and there's already a red cow, <laughs> welcome to the family. Will you come to Israel to build the third temple? I oh, my a... goodness. They've actually got the kids gathered around far four. Really? Holy what? crap. This is a new video. It's five days. <laughs> oh, my goodness, man. What is it called again? Action for Humanity. Action for Humanity, in it. Is that what it's called? Yeah. But Far Four is wearing a dress. Are we sure this is not Far Four's wife or something? Or that just uh, that, is that just a cool garment? They got Far Four. It is that's the uh, that's probably the original Far Four costume. What's the video called? Give displaced Syrians a home. Give displaced Syrians a home. Action for humanity. Why does it only have ten views? I don't know. Put it on the screen, no music, because the music might be copyrighted. Yeah. <laughs> Turn the volume down. Look at that. That's far four. That is far four. Hi, kitties. You want to go kill some Jews? <laughs> 72. Space Virgin 72. That is weird. That is that is proper weird. It's proper mental in it. That's funny. Gotta check it out. But what what is this nobody channel though? It has like 300 subscribers. Anyway, that's funny. So uh yes, I'm on my way to build the third temple. Five silver pesos said L. Ron Hubbard basically started Scientology as a way to generate tax-free revenue. Very genius. Well, well that's cool. That's worked out, it seems. Based. Based. His his books were not I don't know, was he successful as a writer at least? Was he not? Did he suck as a writer? I don't know. Oh. Uh, Danny Goner said, 1990 slurs used and laughed about by AP in 2024. I've always doubted that he was an atheist or a secular humanist. Just choose Jesus and sadism. <laughs> Is this a joke? Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> uh I will choose the sadism, okay. Uh, Sanke said Hong Chi Kwan can compete as the fakest prophet too. Claimed to be Isis' brother and had a demon slaying swords to destroy the, the Qing demons. More death than World War I. That sounds pretty based. Legimathigayon. Hey, what's up, looking like the guy on said Mosab Hassan Yusuf Mosab Hassan Yusuf voice, please. The description of the Huri is having <laughs> description of the Huri is having see-through skin and being able to see veins uh, veins. The description Sounds of the Huri as having see-through skin and being able to see veins. Sounds like describing a fetus. You can't get more pedo than that. You can't get more pedo than that. Yeah. It is interesting how what kind of a woman is is being is being promoted in the hadith by Muhammad. Quite interesting. EMS said Al Muhad Caliphate, 12th century, some of the worst Islamic massacres of Jews in history foreshadowed 1929 Haifa massacre. That's true. The Almohads had their whole um, their whole idea was, um, what, what was it? What was it called? They had a they had a significantly more aggressive way of establishing or re-establishing Islamic dominance. They were brutal. The Almohad dynasty. Immortal17 said AP did his camera because he's crying. He knows Christian birthdays are way fun than atheist birthdays. Hope you guys buy our Allah. Peace be upon him. That is true. Atheist birthdays suck. They're like, uh, here I am, another year closer to death. Yeah. 
You know what we give? You know what we gift each other on atheist birthdays? Schopenhauer books or something? I don't know. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I made a similar joke before already. You should have known. Uh, Script Colby said, "Check us for the children." <laughs> Love ye. you. You may have yourselves a great Sunday and a wonderful week. Catch you guys next weekend. It's Thank cash you. us. Cash us next weekend. Cash me us. How about that? Uh, yes. Anset Lee says, after a mo job, here's my Jizya, AP and David Wood. You two are my... <laughs> <clears throat> I only realized after reading it what had just happened. I uh, realized after you said it. <laughs> 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 you, you two are my favorite pair of comedians who pack up serious topics in a rather funny way. You just it's made the do. biggest joke of the of the live stream here. It's what we do. Us comedians. Yep. <laughs> uh, and spread them in a family friendly way. You say family friendly. This is the super chat. Yeah. Comment. This you start off with <laughs> Mo Job and Jizya. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all hem to Allah. Thank you very much. This is a very good super chat. And said, Lee, I appreciate it. It's good quality super chat. This is what I like to see. Family friendly stuff on this channel. Venus and Venus Envy said, Farfour is trans now. So stunning, so brave. That is true. That is true. There was already something suspicious about the voice. And finally, Hip hip dip. Hey, hip hip dip. Thank you. Hip hip dip made a super chat of $99.99 and said, Is this thing on? Last time I super chatted, it gave me an error. Hopefully, I'm not sending this jizya twice. Yeah, don't jizya. Don't send the jizya twice. Um, hip, 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 hip hip dip. Thank you. Worked this time. Maybe because you didn't include anything that is problematic in the super chat. This is how it goes through. This is what YouTube likes. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Mo said, Muslims hate Jew for the same reason Cain hated Abel. Abel was blessed, blessed by God. You said blessed. Blessed by God. Because Cain's... Hey, hey we, need to, we need to combine blessed and based <laughs> and come up with blessed. Yeah. <laughs> See? See, there's a reason for everything. For me misspeaking that. See? Good idea. Because Cain's own works were evil and his brother's righteous. This kind of sounds like ableism to me, but yeah, that might be true. That might I'm be going true. to tweet it right now. I can't resist. Blazed. <laughs> blessed. Uh, blessed are the based. Based equals blazed. That's funny. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Um, yeah. Blazed. Blessed blazed. plus based equals blazed. 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 Everyone says bla blitzed. Yeah, okay. Okay. Uh, Jews are blazed. Yeah, Jews are blazed, said Alan. See, Alan said it. It's, an, it's now a rele revelation. It's an ayah oh, yeah. directly from the Quran. Alan says Jews are blazed. Yes, blazed. <clears throat> All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you so much for joining. <clears throat> Amal said, what do you like about Christianity the most? Um, where was that? Is it Amal, said, Amal said, what do you like about Christianity the most? Is it G-Wood? <laughs> no. Uh <laughs> <laughs> what no it's, it's it's the food um yeah the food christian food <laughs> what is christian food <laughs> i don't know <laughs> i would say it is it is it is something about the moral aspect of it is something about the emphasis of the all loving and forgiving that's what that's the thing that i think about when i when i think about the positive side of christianity Ari Wasserman, I am the Mahdi. Next question, blazed. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks, everyone. Uh, have a fantastic day. Oh yeah, I have to say a few. Uh, I have to say a few times that I like Israel and I love Jews. 
to just uh, fulfill my uh, duty given by Mossad, so I can get paid properly. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You gotta, you gotta meet the quota. There's a quota. Yeah. So I, I love Israel. I love Israel. I love Jews. Jews are awesome. Israel is good. Jews play yes. with cool toys. Dreidels are cool. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think we, I think we had we hit the quota. Okay. Good. All right. Um, thanks everyone. Thanks everyone for joining. Uh, we will be live tomorrow on Dawood's channel. No, we won't. What? Oh, yeah, you're going. said it like nine times, yeah. Okay, you're leaving. Okay, we will not be live tomorrow on David Wood's channel, so make sure not to join us on David Wood's channel tomorrow. Uh, we will see you You next should still time. go live. You should still go live just to keep the rhythm going. Call I up someone. Call up, call up some cool ex-Muslim to join you live and have a cool discussion. I will see. I will see. Or, uh, we'll... or 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 Rebecca, if you guys want to talk about a video or something like that, you want to go through something. That's true. That's true. If it's anything to do with Israel, get Rebecca on there. If it's not, get uh, get get one of the ex-Muslims on there with you. That's true. Make fun that's of something. A good, that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's a good idea to go live tomorrow without David. So most likely we will not see each other tomorrow. Thank you all so much you for joining. Nothing. You keep saying Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for joining. Have a fantastic day. And as always, stay away from a stay away from a slam.